Dergerotic.com. Welcome, travelers, to the fringes of reality, where the strange and mysterious meet, and the thin veil between fact and fiction is torn. Welcome to the Forbidden Frontier. Oh, you're beautiful. Listen to that crowd. Mm. And they always end so promptly. Yep. Uh, they're well behaved. Uh, welcome to the Forbidden Frontier. What episode is this, X Ray Girl? Uh, it is 53. 53. 53 episodes almost a, a little over a year we missed a, cu- a couple we're gonna miss a couple very shortly apologies going to vegas yeah. but uh we have a good one to leave you off on tonight uh but before we get to our very special guest what's up adam krigler how's it going everyone what happened what happened uh, to your face i was at my in-laws uh last uh the, the past couple days and i had uh some ham for the first time in a long time and uh I, I woke exciting. up with with a mustache. I woke oh, up and I'm like, okay. "Wow, that's uh, this is new." Was uh, it all a prank? right. No, my I I always shave whenever I shave my beard off. I always do like a weird mustache. Oh, okay. And I looked at my wife and I'm like, "Hey, check out my stash." And she looked at me and she goes, "I like it." And I'm like, "Oh, she likes it." You look li- well. She I was like, maybe I'll keep it for a few days. And I went to the in-laws with the mustache, and everyone was like, yeah, yeah, it works. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to rock it for a little bit. So now I have a mustache. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how long it lasts. I mean, <laughs> might not last long. But 70s I don't care. detective, gay porn, not sure. <laughs> Could be both. So You know, I'm keeping my options open for the future, right. you know? <laughs> right. Uh, hello, X-Ray girl. How are you? I'm very good. Um, a, a little tired. But I'm very caffeinated uh, using gamer water. So let's go. <laughs> What's gamer water? Uh, the, the, you're sponsored by them. I know, but what? Like, which, <laughs> oh, which flavor? Jeez. Oh, uh, guacamole gamer fart. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Did she just. She's it's sick. called guacamole gamer farts or something like that. <laughs> There's a number in there as well. I would never want to taste that. It's pretty good, actually. You know, gamers are just no. Gamers are a wonderful, strange culture. Yeah, those, <laughs> like, those things are not. It's keto to... friendly, so you could have it, Ben, if you wanted. No sugar. I guess it's the... better than Monster. All right, uh, Quarter Black is sick. He's hanging out in the back room. Uh, he had too many. Uh, yeah, he and his Zorbu kids. Uh, well, yeah, he had too many Zorbu visits, but uh, it, you know, since it's hey, a I heard that. Yeah, so what? Since it's Trans Awareness Day, you went on a gender hunt, right? And uh, you're awfully tired. You went with your kids. I'm extremely tired. Yes, this is yeah. what's going on. Oh, I'm in the back, wow. though. I'm chilling. All right. Bye. Bye. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I am very pleased to talk about this subject because uh, Adam uh, brought it to my attention. I, I, I've known it through Robert Shock, right? So, uh, and shit, this was a blind spot. So I went down a rabbit hole of suspicious observers and uh sun space weather and uh i've been kind of taking it in all week now and uh i just watched an hour and a half documentary that's yeah glad she said it um and uh, (laughs) and uh, it's been great uh we'd like to welcome ben davidson from suspicious observers how are you my friend i'm splendid thinking about the name of that drink that she's putting in her mouth right now yeah (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's all right. I I have, I have to figure out a name for my drink. They're our sponsor because uh, I'm uh I'm a well known gamer, Ben. Uh, massive, excellent gamer. Uh, just learned how to open doors. Gamer. In, uh, Witcher yeah. Three. Yeah. And uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, 
I, I have to figure out a name of a yeah. drink. I it's don't know. Not I, the, it's not the worst name. There's a couple others. There's Blowhole Blast, Anime Girl Thighs, um, Grandpa's Ashes. Wow. Um, Grandpa's Ashes. <laughs> soda Pressed Despair. <laughs> uh, titty Milk. <laughs> you know. Guacamole wow. referred is not that bad. <laughs> Did you prep Ben on what kind of a show he's coming on? Like who? Like what I don't even recognize what's happening here. This is oh, all new to me too. He's carrying sorry. over from FNT last. I'm so Holy sorry. Cow. Last <laughs> FNT was a bit off the. Uh, somebody chat. Somebody tell Gamer Juice I will plug Titty Milk. There you go. Ah! All right. Okay. Ah! All right. <laughs> it's actually really good. I like it. <laughs> so see, there's one for everyone, I guess. <laughs> I saw you, uh, Ben. I saw you respond to Melanie Mack, uh, our, our our treasure around here, who likes to drop a I certain game her. reward. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's one of us. It's all good. It's all good, folks. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, oh, if, yeah. You, if, if anybody watched the interview when Ben won, went on with Bright Insight over on Jimmy's channel, you you guys, you started talking about, I was excited because I wanted to hear more about the Micronova, you know, and, and have you talk to Jimmy because Jimmy's great. And then you guys ended up just broing out the whole time. I'm like, oh man, these guys are so rad. Like, I want to hang out with these guys. That was, that was a great interview. Yeah, we had fun on Tim Pool as well. That was a great time. I, uh, yeah, it was. I, I mean, I just knew his online personality. I didn't know anything about him. The guy acts like he he's not famous. I mean, he's just a cool dude. So, uh, and that was the second time uh, I had done something with Jimmy. So, uh, yeah, Jimmy's I like getting together. Right. Hi. Yeah, well, yeah. He was supposed to go to to Cosmic Summit as well, and then it didn't happen. Oh well. We're going to be talking about Com Cosmic Summit. You know, there's a lot of uh, things that <laughs> intertwine here on the internet, and we just, you know, it's crazy. Well, uh, but uh, let's first talk about, Adam, okay, Micronovas. Micronovas are, are relative, I guess they've been around for a while, but they're relatively new to me. So, uh, Ben, uh, you want to? Is there a brief way to explain the Micronova? And what we're going to kind of talk about is the twelve thousand year cycle that you've been going over, the disaster cycle. Uh, so, can you explain to the audience who might not know uh, what a Micronova is? Sure. The Micronova started as something that uh, I calculated as being physically possible from just about any star, including our sun, uh, after the evidence that comes with these 12,000 year disasters that seem to be happening pretty regularly on schedule. Some of them can only be explained uh, with something like a solar micronova. And it turns out that uh, the way other stars go nova is not all that dissimilar. In fact, it's very helpful for learning how the sun could do it. And basically what is happening is we're going through a galactic magnetic reversal you know, any spinning magnetic system, whether that's the Earth, the Sun, the galaxy, a spinning sphere magnet in a laboratory, they all go, they can all have these magnetic reversals. And so we're going through a galactic one right now, and it is going to cause the Sun to, through a series of modestly complex chemical and physical processes, to darken to red, darken to black as a film, a, a sort of layer builds up in the atmosphere of the sun, which we call the corona. And then after the magnetic reversal is over, uh, the sun is going to blast that shell off very, very powerfully. And uh, it's going to send us into the next stage of Earth. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and again, this is a, you know, I had, I had first heard this through Robert Schock, uh, you know, through the Younger Dryas. I, I'd like, I told you before the show real quick, we were, I was a comet guy, and we actually just did a show kind of debating comet versus the sun. Uh, and while there's a lot of evidence out there about the comet and there's a lot of science, I'm starting to lean towards the sun. Uh, well, because uh, how about we go there next? How about we yeah, go there next? Sure. So there are impactors, call it from a comet or a meteor or whatever, there are impactors in this 12,000 year cycle as well. The problem is, if something's going to be that regular where it's not just one object that's going to hit. 
it's something big enough that it's going to bring little things with it or it's a giant asteroid field that we pass through we would see that if it was a comet that big we certainly would have seen it long ago if it was an asteroid field radio astronomy would have picked that up by now as well uh, quite easily the other thing is in a lot of the regions where the so-called impactors occurred they find some of that evidence I was talking about, which are Nova level isotopes. What is a Nova level isotope? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's an isotope that can only be created in a stellar Nova. A meteorite impact can't do it. A volcanic blast can't do it. A nuclear blast can't do it. It takes the Nova from a star. And when you is think about the way- Like aluminum 26, something like that? That one can only be produced in supernova, but some of the ones that are most mm. important here would be some of the isotopes of uranium. Um, there are a couple others um, without getting too too deep into to chemical stuff. But what those impactors are is they're not meteors. They're not comets. Those are the pieces of the shell that the sun blasted off. Those things go throughout the entire solar system. And yeah, unfortunately, some of them are going to hit the Earth as well. It's a bad day to be underneath that one, but luck of the draw, they haven't wiped out the planet yet, and they're unlikely to wipe out the planet. This, when the sun blasts this away, um, the pieces are quite small, uh, luckily. And so, yes, there are impactors, but within the impactor evidence is the telltale sign that it is the sun that's actually doing it because you can't get these things anywhere else. And beyond that, for something to be cyclically producing this impactor, uh, phenomenon along with the remainder of the cycle, we would see it by now. The icing on the cake there is that this 12,000 year cycle comes with Nova level isotopes, a geomagnetic excursion of the planet, global volcanic upticks, global environmental change. And there's no way for an impactor alone to do something like that. Uh, you really need an electromagnetic blast to the earth to actually change everything like that in this sort of way. And so, yeah, okay, at, at a cursory, very superficial glance, you could be like, oh, yeah, something hit here, something hit here. Well, yeah, okay, something did here, but what else happened there? One of my favorite catastrophists from a little over a century ago, he made the charge that we will not understand what's going on until somebody can explain all of the evidence. You know, you had some people focusing on uh, clear evidence of these ex major extinctions that were happening on this cycle. Others were talking about the evidence of the great waves, the fact that the oceans appear to invade the continents pretty much every time. And a lot of people were talking about it, but they were all over the place. And this guy named Hibben said, well, everybody, until we can explain all the evidence with one thing, we're, we're not going to have this thing pegged. And now, luckily, we, we can do that. They were actually doing a fantastic job all that time ago with the little bit of information that they had. Imagine trying to build a house and nine out of every 10 tools you need isn't there. They didn't have the tools in the toolbox. They did a fantastic job with what they had. It's just that we live in the information age now. Our access to the physics, the chemistry, and the observational reality of our Earth, our sun, the galaxy, it's like not, nothing we've nothing we've ever had before. And so, uh, no, it is not a comet. It's the sun. And, and I love, uh, you know, the documentary I watched was done a couple of years ago. And, and well, you, it was a pieces of videos that you put together and you had to amend it just based on six months of information that had come yeah. out. That was blowing. My, I, I had to break out my notes. I couldn't keep up. I'm, I'm a little slow, but I had to keep up with a lot. It, it was it was amazing. Um, yeah, in that video, and, it actually when when you're talking to Robert Schock and he he's saying like here in Egypt we have these places that actually show those isotopes that you were talking about that they could only be here by that that shell that the sun blasted off. So it's proving right. that that happened. Yeah, Robert Schock has been a fantastic resource. Um, he and some other formerly famous scientists who are now sort of they've been pushed to the fringe. Um, they have been instrumental in putting this entire story together. One of them is Dr. Anthony Peratt as well. He, um, he led the nuclear testing programs several decades ago. Um, and, uh, he knows things that he still can't talk about to this day, but he, 
he shared a lot of what he can talk about with me. And uh, he did some interviews with us as well. He's an absolutely fantastic resource. Robert's great as well. Um, Dr. August Dunning, formerly of NASA, formerly of Caltech. Um, he's fully on board with the solar micronova thing. And, you know, he also helped me to understand why they're not telling people about this. And uh, basically, it would ruin people's careers and it would cause a panic. And well, they yeah, think if, that if they're for it. If the entire world realized that, you know, all the planet might be completely thrown into chaos in the next 50 years, there would be no reason for anyone to adhere to any moral, you know, civilization. It, it would be it would be chaos. It would be the kind of anarchy that would destroy anything we'd want to save. So, right. It makes sense why they they hid the Adam and Eve story. They didn't want that information to go out. I mean that even if yeah. people would believe it or not anyway i i don't know if people would it is kind of yeah. it feels like wild that that would be the case that that the surf or the mantle could dislodge and shift but i think that makes the most sense of what caused these floods all over the planet it wasn't an impact and the ice melting and suddenly just water was everywhere that's not no i wouldn't do that's it that's not that's not enough right it, but when when you think about if if it just suddenly the mantle disconnected and just the wa the water is moving, right? It's like, no, we're going to keep moving. And it suddenly the land's like, all right, I'm going to stop. Like, what do you think's going to happen? I don't know if you've been, ever been in a car wreck or anything like that. Uh, objects in, in motion stay in motion, you know? So it, it, like you said, it, the water attacked the land, invaded the land. That's a good way of putting it. It's right. It makes so well, much how sense. How do most to people me. die in car, car accidents? They get thrown out their car. Uh, not a seatbelt, even with the seatbelt, sometimes they get due to the impact, they get thrown out there. There's a funny ass video I should share it of a guy driving an FJ on the beach. Have you seen that one? They shared it yesterday and he flipped <clears throat> and the dude flies right out his window and survives, like lands in the ocean, gets up, kind of limps away. <laughs> I'll show you the video later. It's freaking, it's only Lucky funny because I have an FJ and you can't freaking drive those like that. But, um, no, no I think let's so the CIA cover up, right? kind of makes oh, sense yeah. I, don't, I don't like the cia fuck I the cia think so. i think they should all be broken up but yeah it does make sense to the effect that uh, you know society would crumble and uh it uh they three body problem uh a show that started out good kind of ended weak uh has the, the an alien a possible alien invasion coming in in 400 years and it kind of shows the world freaking out uh we wouldn't have that kind of notice uh, at all, at all. So obviously, it, the the biggest problem with the cover up is keeping rich people, you know, quiet. And, and and when they're doing something obvious like digging giant holes in mountains or moving and buying swaths of of I don't know why Hawaii, but, but giant swaths yeah, of Maui. And, that's that's an awful terrible. idea, <laughs> right? Hawaii, big, Hawaii is in Hawaii is in trouble. Hawaii is in big trouble when this happens. Well, yeah, you you talked about the um, what was it the, the 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 skeleton of the planet, right? The the bones of the planet, and how uh, possibly Hawaii is connected to the core uh, of the planet. Uh, it just it's in the middle of the fucking ocean too. So if the planet stops moving, I, I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> Not no. even on the highest volcano. No thanks, dude. I actually think it was no. the interview with Jimmy where you were mentioning how these elites that are building stuff on Hawaii are they're kind of like. They kind of know, but they don't know the whole story. They're kind of like yeah, well, in I mean, the club. There's, there's several levels of that. And, you know, to be honest, the people that sit at the highest table, we don't know their names. No. It's not of Klaus not. Schwab, the president. It's not the people at the World Economic Forum or the UN. Those are the names we get to hear. The only one who I, I think might be at that highest table that I could put a name on is Queen Beatrix. Um, but I don't even I know mean, who I, that is. I obviously have no way of knowing for sure, but no, the, the people at the highest table, we don't get to know their names. Um, but yeah, there are people who they're getting money from and then they're only giving them part of the story. And uh, yeah, a lot of them are, are building in places that make absolutely no sense. But, uh, you know, people like Jeff Bezos, he's building in exactly the right place. Um, he got the full story. That's for sure. Um 
you know, people like Elon Musk probably have it figured out. Um, there's a, there's a couple of others, but m most of the ones I hear about, they're they're either not thinking clearly or that somebody didn't give them the full story. You yeah, think like Mark Airport it, it is one of the ports, the future ports? Maybe, maybe. The problem is Denver is an absolute clusterfuck of nonsense. What a terrible place Facts. on the planet. Facts. It, like, yes, I, I agree with that. Denver sucks. <laughs> Denver can't even sucks. Can't I even can't begin stand to Denver. Is. Um, yeah. It's that the city's only airport. I, yeah, the, the, well, depending on the city, you know, it's in a, I guess it's high enough elevation, but yeah, it's still a shithole. Why would you want to live there? <laughs> it, it is in high enough elevation, but it is, it's more woke than LA or Hollywood or DC. Uh -huh. There's more satanic, there's more satanic cults there than just about anywhere else. Um, like I, I know Washington DC and Hollywood are known for that. I promise you Denver's got them beat. Um, you walk down the street there, more than half the people have bright pink, bright blue, bright green hair, mm. and Ugh. are uh, ambiguously gendered, and uh, hate the American flag, hate you if you're white, hate you if you're straight, hate you if you're a conservative. Um, it's, it's not a fun place to be. No, I've never had a desire to go there, ever uh and and yeah yeah uh and california was bad enough living there i live in san francisco for 18 years too so <laughs> fuck uh if, if I, I could I, if if i can actually bring it back to the micronova there's some questions that i, I have for you ben um you, you mentioned that you, you mentioned this shell that that builds up on the sun now a lot of um the times you're talking about it it, it tends to be in a, in a binary system where there's two stars and one yeah, is a lot of times that is the case Right, it's siphoning the dust, and and that's kind of what creates that layer, and then it blows it off. Um, well, what is? I I know there's dust in our system, right, in our solar system here, but is it just kind of like how does it make its way to the sun if there's no second star to pull from? So, the sun is the. I mean, gravity is still a thing. It's still the the uh, most. It's still the heaviest body around. There's also yeah. more dust being dumped into our system because the galactic magnetic reversal follows something called the galactic current sheet. It's this wave that comes out from the center of the galaxy. And this not yeah, only contains this not only contains the galactic magnetic reversal point, but it's an electric field. And much like an electrostatic duster in your home, it attracts all the dust uh, in in its mm. path and sort of pushes it out ahead like like snow on a shovel blade. And so there are, they're already noticing more dust around the sun, more dust in the interplanetary space and more dust than they expected out even past Pluto. So that the dust is already on the rise. Now, right now the sun still has the ultraviolet luminosity and the solar wind outflow of plasma in all directions to keep it at bay. But so much of what causes the sun to be that way is going to be temporarily clicked off by the magnetic reversal point of the galaxy. And when that happens, that stuff's going to rapidly accumulate in the atmosphere of the sun. And uh, in addition to the loss of luminosity, the, in, the increase of dust is going to basically make the sun go black. The image you're seeing on the screen there, that is the galactic current sheet. The sun has one as well. They've found this in other galaxies. They can make this in the lab. Guy I know made it in the lab, actually. And really? essentially, yeah, essentially what they, it is so well understood now. And, you know, even though this isn't really talked about, they know how, how tall the wavelength is. So like they know the amplitude. Um, apparently it starts in smaller and then gets bigger and bigger as you get to the outer skirts of the galaxy. Its amplitude goes from about 60 parsecs to 170 parsecs. They know how thick the current sheet is, uh, a, a few tens of light years in thickness, and so uh, moving at a speed of between 700 and 1,000 kilometers a second radially outward through the galaxy. So they've, they've discovered this a long time ago. 
Uh, they've gotten to know quite a bit about the one in the Milky Way. And as I've said, they've now discovered this in all the nearby galaxies as well. There's a very good chance that it is a pervasive uh, feature throughout the universe. Yeah. That's where, a problem. Where does, it, where does it come from? So, you, you know, well, it starts small, obviously at the center point, something. Is, yeah. is it coming yeah. from something? So it, it's tough to say what exactly is at the center of the galaxy. I know the mainstream right. scientists like to discuss. Yeah. Oh, you've got it right there. Ripples are 225 light years tall. Um, the sequence is 50 light years. Wide. Oh, you're you're you got my book there. Maybe one of the links from the videos. I, I think I quoted that exact thing in the book. Um, but yeah, it was in a recent video you did a, a couple of weeks yeah. ago, I think. Right on. It's. Um, it's the kind of thing where anytime you have a spinning sphere magnet and whatever is at the center of the galaxy is a spinning sphere magnet, you're going to have this radially outflowing wave like that. And it's that's what the sun is as well. It's a spinning sphere magnet. Um, the Van Allen belts are actually the start of Earth's, but Earth doesn't, it just doesn't get out very far, mostly because we are orbiting the sun within the electric field of the solar wind, which sort of buffers it and keeps it in its place. Um, but, you know, the, the Van Allen belts, they, they, they touch each other like this. They're, they're not really distinct belts. It's more like different parts of the wave. Um, but so a, any spinning sphere magnet is going to have one of these and it radially goes outward, you know, like a spiral going outward from, from the center. And so this is, relatively basic physics. They probably should have known about this from the start. Now they have seen it and they know exactly, uh, you know, they pretty much know exactly what it is. And so when you start thinking about, okay, what are the ways that Nova events are triggered? And you mentioned most of the ones they know about, there's a binary star and it's feeding material to the other one. And dumping that material onto the star causes it to blast off a nova event. They thought for a long time that that was the only way you could create a nova event until they found um, what they call dark nova. These ones that punch holes in molecular clouds. Basically, they first found one poor little star, lonely wandering, and then it encountered a molecular and dust cloud. And then it just boom. And then that really sort of sort of started to get the ball rolling. They found several other dark nova. Now they've found several other nova that don't have a binary at all. And basically they realized all you need to do is dump material onto the star and it's going to nova. And they've also discovered there's another way to trigger a nova, which is a magnetic kick. And so we've come to the point in astronomy where, okay, now there's two ways to trigger nova and a binary still works, but you don't need one. You just need to either dump material onto the star or give it a magnetic kick. Right. We're going to get both with this galactic current sheet. We're getting the magnetic kick from the galactic from the, magnetic from the sheet. Yep. And we're getting the extra dust and material dumped in by the sheet. It's both ways that they know how to make a nova combined into one in something that's going to be repeatedly over time hitting our solar system, which could produce a repeating solar micronova, which happens to be the only way to, as Hibben asked for over a hundred years ago, explain all of the evidence of these disaster right. cycles. With, so the, the, oh, sorry. Ahead, with, with the two ways, is it additive to have both of them occur together versus one or the other, or is just the equal it's amount? Additive, of multiplicative, or exponential is hard to say. Okay. Um, we'd have to witness it in reality. But what we do know it, is it, it can't be a good thing to have them no. both happen <laughs> at the exact same time. I, like, I don't want right. one of them to happen. <laughs> like, so. right. Within a matter of like 48 to 72 hours, the magnetic kick is gonna hit the star. It's going to lose its ability to push material away and then material is gonna get dumped onto it. All in the right. span of like two or three days. This is not good. This is no, not good. Right. And it perfect. And it, it it just so happens to be the only way to explain all the evidence that we have here on the planet. It's a uh, it's now, a story. In one of your itself. Sorry, it, 
yeah in one of your recent videos you actually you have a, a time map of 6,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago, right. and it's always in, in sections of 6,000 going far back. And you have a lot of different events along that timeline, uh, but it really feels like 12,000 years ago, it was a lot worse than 6,000 years ago. Um, right. So now, every 12,000 years is a full geomagnetic excursion and a big one with the solar micronova. Okay. On the half cycle, 6,000 years, it's a more mini excursion and only about a super flare level event from the sun. I say only like it's no big freaking deal. Um, right. It's a very big deal. Um, it triggers the Heinrich events. If you know anything about climate, uh, it this is what triggers Heinrich events. And, you know, it, it is true that the, the half cycle on the 6,000 year mark, it's not as bad. Unfortunately, the one 6,000 years ago, exactly 6,000 years ago was a mini one. And yeah. so, um, yeah, Is that one what of the, the Sahara. Uh, yeah, that that triggered the greenest of the green Saharan episodes. You know, the Sahara goes green every couple thousand years, but the greenest they've ever known it to be was about six thousand years ago, when that mm. tropical hydroclimate and Heinrich event occurred, and uh, there was also a mini geomagnetic excursion at that time, and uh, very likely a major solar flare when that happened. But on the twelve thousand year marks, it is much worse. And we are due for the 12,000 year one right now. Um, th the last major one was 12,000 years ago. The last minor one was 6,000 years ago. It's right on time. So we were saying, okay, we're on time in terms of a geological or an astronomical time scale. What do we need to look for? We need to look for the magnetic poles moving and the magnetic field weakening. Check and check. Magnetic poles and magnetic field are speeding up those processes. We also see this evidence of the dust increasing way more dust than they're supposed to be way more than there used to be all around us we see evidence of magnetic changes on all the planets and the sun we see um, earth's ionosphere changing which is an electric layer at the top of the atmosphere even earth's rotation speed is changing something they're trying to blame on climate change which is absolutely nonsense um, <laughs> com completely ridiculous it's you know, think more of an electrically fed homopolar motor and how fast it spins, things like that. Uh, but essentially, everything you would want to see to at least wrap your head around the idea that, okay, should I care about this topic? We're due in time for the major one, the 12,000 year cycle, and everything we would be expecting to see on Earth, on the Sun, on the other planets, and throughout the interplanetary space of the solar system, it is all right there and in addition to that there's even more esoteric things um this event seems to be described pretty well by the bible whether it's the sun going black or uh, revelation 16 8 and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire whether it's talking about the earth turning over or swaying like a drunkard the idea of half the or a third of the stars being thrown from the sky Ancient people, all they did was watch the sky. They knew the difference between stars and meteors. So the interpretations of that as being, oh, like there was a great meteor shower. No, they knew what meteors were and they knew what stars were. Losing a third of the stars of the sky is because the Earth's going to tilt like this and the frame of the sky that you could see before is not the same frame of the sky that you see after the Earth tilts. And this is not just in the Bible. This is in the Quran. This is in Zoroastrian texts. Uh, yes. the, pagans, the, the pagans describe this. India has recorded five or six of these events. Uh, while they don't like talking about it, the aboriginals who have survived 50, 60,000 years in Australia describe these events as well. And so you not only have all of the physical evidence from a modern geophysical observation, past geophysical observations, planetary science, stellar astrophysics, galactic astrophysics, but even things like Religion and myth are lining up with this as well. And to an even greater degree, it's not just that they describe it, but they describe what's going to be happening to the people at this time. The people are going to lose morality. They will lose their faith in God. They will, they, they will basically be acting like the fucking clown world we see out there today. It's amazing that we've come so far only for the formerly you have to choose one, science or religion, to finally be joined as one. And people realize, oh, wow. Okay, so it was just the fact that 
they were writing this down from the perspective of an individual with the equivalent of a second grade education. And now that we can actually see these things happening, it's not all that different from the astrophysics and the geophysics and other things like that. It is all the same story. It is. And I, lo I love how you point out and because uh, we have to catastrophism is, is coming back in, in a big oh. way. And it's good. And it's good. Uh, and and it's it's blending that myth. And now it's not myth anymore. And again, you pointed out in, in your movie like, oh, OK, we'll we'll accept that they knew geometry and some physics. But, man, they, they just made up a bunch of stories. They got high on ayahuasca or whatever the hell they were doing. And it was just all bullshit. And, and it's not they. they like you said, they obsessed on the stars. They obsessed on the skies, and they would know if anything was even slightly different, much less an entire sky that's different. And right. What's amazing is they're describing culture and politics that we're seeing today at the exact yeah. same time that, that we're seeing this natural disaster beginning to unfold. And to be honest, the greatest mystery is how in the world they knew it. Okay, yeah. if they if they if they witnessed these disasters before, I get how they could talk about the disasters and the end of the world coming. How did they know uh, that clown world was coming? How did they yeah. know clown world was coming? Do you think that just I, comes I, I with no society answer. being built up, though? Because uh, let me ask you, how many times maybe, do you think maybe society has built multiple up to times the point multiple, of being able I, to I, I fall apart? Answer. I believe Atlantis, Mew, and Lemuria were a thing. Um, there's, you know, there's evidence that on the other side of the planet, they they may have risen and fallen several times. But mm, I would right. say, at with that caveat, my recognition that we may have risen and fallen many times, at least once. And I don't think we're as far along right now as Atlantis was twelve thousand years ago. Right before I agree fall. with that. Um, I think they were probably further ahead than we are right now. And uh, they got reduced to nothing. So um, it's it, it's about to be rough. It's about to be rough. I'm glad I'm here for it, scale? though. What's the time scale? Uh, before, 20, uh, before 2050. 2050. It, could be as early, it could be as early as the next five to ten years. Um, it if we get lucky, we could get into the 2040s. So, wow. so the question is just because I'm selfish, I'm just going to go, do I want this to happen when I'm still like, I can still run or when I'm in, when I'm 75 and I'm screwed. <laughs> so, I don't know. You got kids. I got kids, man. Yeah. So uh, my kids are almost nine, seven and four. I would like them to be at least teenagers before this goes down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm hoping and, and, to have a little. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to surviving. We'll get to the surviving part and and what you talked about because uh, all this. You know what? For, for I don't know why. I can't explain why. It makes no sense because a catastrophe is a catastrophe. But the sun thing like makes your butt pucker a little bit more than a meteor. I don't know why because it's just so complete. Well, we can't do anything about it. it can't do a anything. Meteor about like it maybe we can fixed. nudge it. Yeah. You, you know, there's like everything up until oh the sun is gonna go. It's going to blast out a bunch of a, shit at Nova <laughs> and we can't do anything about it. Like, oh, there's and, and zero other we can things do. can happen to the earth. You know, uh, shock was talking to, and, and many others have talked about all the vitrification that's everywhere, oh, yeah. uh, especially right. on the Giza plateau. Uh, that's unexplainable. That looks like lightning strikes, but it's way too big. Well, so you, that that like green glass that they t that they found in the in the desert or several other instances you got people on the internet being like, this is evidence of an ancient nuclear war. It's like, really? Where are the other <laughs> isotopes? Um, right. Oh, well, that, that's, that's flare burning from the sun. Um, Makes it, sense. It, it's, it would get between, you know, 280 and 400 degrees on the side of the earth facing the sun. And that would probably last, it wouldn't need to last for very long. No. Uh, it would only need to last for just a couple of seconds. But also, this is why all the cultures that survived this in the past have three things in common. They're nowhere near the ocean. They're nowhere near the ocean, number one. They're usually up at high elevation, number two, and they have a way to hide underground. And whether that's uh, Cappadocia and Turkey or the cave dwellings just a few miles away yep. from me here, they all had a way to get underground and not terribly deep underground because there will be a great earthquake. The whole planet's going to shake when it goes like this or sways like a drunkard. Yep. 
those deep underground military bases, those dumbs, they're not going to survive that. Well, uh, you said something, something like, like not that much earth, right? You, I mean, I, no, I remember you talking. It's a like foot, a, a, a small foot of earth amount. on top of your head. A foot of it's earth wild. on top of your head, dude. That's going to be enough. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, damn. This, this is like uh, this isn't like the kind of thing where the rays can penetrate through the ground. It's still okay. just ultraviolet light, um, and you know, okay. th there's a significant fraction of of infrared as well and other things, but it's not like it can penetrate through the soil. Um, that's not a thing. So uh, you, you don't need to get that far. You don't need to get that far underground. Um, you need to be away from the coastlines, away from um, dangerous volcanoes, away from major fault lines, away from big cities for sure, because that's not where you want to be when the power goes out and resources start running low. Uh, cannibalism will be making a comeback. Um, not just in Haiti. Not just in Haiti. Nope. <laughs> no, I got caverns near me, but uh, also, I'm you know I'm like an hour out of Austin. I'm near San Antonio. I'd have to get the hell out of here. I just yeah. have to go. go Especially west. because that, that area is going to be underwater. That area is going to be very much underwater. Yeah, we're I think the, 600 the feet. Of, the Gulf yeah. of Mexico is probably going to make it to the Great Lakes when it when it comes in like, wow not the great lakes that. lovely yeah, it, wow, if not man. even further to make it worse all that water weight on the center of the country after the new madrid fault has caused liquefaction and shaken it to bits isostatic readjustments going to start pushing that land downward if you've ever wow. seen any of the future maps of the united states where there's basically an inland sea right in the middle of the country that's probably real. I, I think that the yeah. United States will cut in half by wow. by that. I don't know if the I don't know if those waters will ever recede because that land is going to be pushed down quite a good bit. Uh, so, and it yeah, was the Gulf like in the middle of the country, but there was a hell of a lot of water, you know, in the west and the no uh, northwest for a long, <laughs> long time. Yeah. So certainly, yeah, I can tell you, I'm worried about the people who think the Ozarks is a good idea. Um, <laughs> There's nothing, there's no mountains in the Ozarks that are tall enough to escape this thing. Uh, the Appalachians are not going to stop the Atlantic. The waters go opposite directions every time. This is one of those things where we can't explain it, but we know the pattern. Kind of like the ancients could predict eclipses, but they also thought the moon was a capricious god that got pissed off at them for doing the wrong thing. They could understand <laughs> the pattern, even if they didn't understand the mechanism and the physics. We don't understand exactly why the waters go the, the opposite direction every time, but we know that they do. And we know that it's every about 6,000 years or 12, at, least every, at least every 12,000 years. And okay. so last time it was the Pacific attacking. It broke through the Rockies. The Ozarks, the Appalachians do not have a shot. In addition to the fact that New Madrid. That explains the Scablands. To, yeah. Sorry. New Madrid's going to shake the Ozarks to bits. And let's say. I'm even wrong about that. You have any idea how many people are going to the Ozarks? How many people with lots and lots of guns are going to the Ozarks? You might as well go sit in the middle of New York City in the middle of a disaster. It, there are no positive propositions I can even begin to imagine about the Ozarks as a safe zone in the, in the disaster. It's it's a trap. It's a trap. Um, so yeah. what elevation are we looking at? Maybe. It would really depend on it, it would depend on a lot of things. How far away are you from the ocean? It would depend on um, what the geography is around you. So, for example, up here in the Rockies, um, you know, there are places here in the Rocky Mountains that are a mile up in elevation. The problem is we know that, you know, last time the Pacific broke through the Rockies. Now, it's not coming that way this time, but let's say. It's last time, and somebody's like, be a mile up. Okay, well, it's one thing if you're at the tippy top of a mountain. It's another if you're in the valleys yeah. in between two mountains that go to 12, 15,000 feet, and that's where the right. water's coming from. And so I can't give you a definitive elevation. I can I can tell you that my, my bug out area is about 5,500 to 6,000 feet above sea level. And the way that the waters are coming this time there's virtually no chance of them getting to where I am, where I'm gotcha. going to be. Um, 
but yeah, I, I would say a, as high as you possibly can, really. Nothing that high in Texas, man. So. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. It's you also pretty... made it abundantly clear that uh, you shouldn't be in Europe. <laughs> oh yeah, that was hilarious. Oh, you're, you're, I, feel, I feel bad. Like I, I have like no yeah. good news for Europe. I have nothing good <laughs> to say. Like they've yeah. got a handy at this point, but you know the yeah. scariest volcano is Campi Flegri. If that complex goes off, yeah. half of Europe, oh, half of Europe's dead. Um, the Mediterranean and the Northern Sea are both going to pound that area. Um, yeah, it is Baltic so deathly, would hit me. it's so densely populated. It's basically like a giant city. You know, there's a it's couple true. areas in Spain that might be okay. Maybe there's a couple areas as you move closer towards Ukraine that might be okay. Maybe. Right. But like for the vast majority of Europe, it is just not looking great at all. Um, same goes for the Indian subcontinent. Um, yeah. A lot of them are going to need to get to the Himalayas very, very quickly. Right. Cause um, the Pacific's going the other way. So it's, it's going over Japan, Korea, it, but you know, the, the Indian ocean is what India has to worry about most. Um, true. Okay. South, South China sea is going to do a slosh back against China and all the huge coastal cities. there are going to get taken out. Um, Japan is completely toast. All those islands in the yeah. West are completely toast. Um, New Zealand's not in good shape. In addition to being a ridiculous tsunami risk, it's uh, it's got Taupo, which is number two on my scary volcano list. Um, what yeah. was that one in, in Europe? What was the name of that volcano? Campi Flegri. It's just off the coast of Italy. Yeah, it's huge. Okay. And it's terrifying. Many. Yeah, I, I was on I was at Sicily, right? And they have Etna, which is always going off. And uh I drove through it. There's a tunnel that drives through it. <clears throat> really expensive right. tunnel paid for by the European tax players. It's the greatest tunnel system I've ever seen. But you're going through it, you're smelling like uh uh, uh Sul sulfur, sulfur the whole oh. time. And I'm like exciting. So we go to the other side and they're like, Yeah, it's currently erupting, it's no big deal. You can see it erupting. Right below the airport, the but city. you're safe in the tunnel. No but worries, you're completely safe. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. It was cool, yeah. but like, yeah, this is crazy. And uh, yeah, that volcano would wipe out Europe. I mean, if uh, yeah. you know, if Chernobyl almost wiped out Europe, uh, imagine what that volcano would do. So, did Chernobyl almost wipe out Europe? Well, no. there was the scare of if that if it hit the water table below, and they had to get those valves going, it could have. Uh, started a chain reaction and a massive explosion it wouldn't have wiped out all of europe but it would have killed a lot of fucking people a lot interesting. of people yeah interesting yeah i know that today in chernobyl there's so many plants and animals there like it befuddles some people how they're actually doing it but same thing is true in fukushima the yeah plants animals there and i gotta tell you the radiation is not something i'm as worried about from from a nuclear standpoint I don't want to go too deep into it, but the government has spooked us on that one a little more than they probably should have. Um, Absolutely. There's a guy, named, a guy named Galen Windsor who made a video called The Nuclear Scare Scam. Uh, he ran the Hanford Plutonium Refining Facility in Washington. Um, he was as big of an expert on nuclear stuff as anybody. And, you know, he, he says that essentially America's most valuable asset is not gold or the land or even the people. It's all of the nuclear, the, the half spent uranium, because it can actually be used to a, an equal degree uh, in other sorts of reactions. And we just have billions of tons of it locked in the earth vault. Um, we can go use it anytime. But, you know, he, he went around the country eating uranium. Um, but anyway, Crazy. I don't want to. Well, no, it's all right. Well, our, our good friend uh, Ryan Kinnell uh, was a nuclear tech on uh, for the Navy, the and absolutely says it's safe. It's it's, it's safe. It, it's safe. It's good. It's good. It, it would now, be good for power. Uh, now, you know, granted, while a nuclear plant is say in the process of a meltdown, you don't want to be standing there. No, like you don't like, want to be there. Like, like okay, yeah, that's a thing, but. In terms of like 
the global spread and the lingering radiation. Any idea how much radiation is in one banana in one cigarette? Like, I, I don't think radiated people, every day. I, I don't think people down on us every day. <laughs> yeah, it really is, yeah. especially when you fly. <laughs> like people are so scared of X-rays, and then they go flying. You're like you go flying all the time. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the pole reversal. Let's talk about the pole reversal because this is true. Really, because this is what causes all this shit. By the way, all the, all the tsunamis we're talking about, the earthquakes. It's a pole reversal, and uh, you are. Uh, I, I think you did a great job of showing us like what we we kind of looked at your video a little bit. Was it last week or a couple weeks ago, Adam? And and showed I, multiple times over the where the poles. Months, yeah, I where feel. the poles are going to be. And uh, for one, one of the biggest questions I've had, you know, even Randall brought this up uh, a while back is like, how, how was Siberia like this warm place, tepid place where there was a bunch of mammoths that were grazing, yet there's a two mile ice exactly. cap uh, on is, over Canada? This is, uh, this is something that uh, I brought up to Randall several years ago, and I'm glad he's actually talking about it. He's ignoring all the stuff I told him about the sun. But he actually listened because he was talking about the fact that the mammoths flash froze and what would it have taken to actually flash freeze a mammoth. And I, I was explaining to him, dude, that is not the biggest mystery with the frozen mammoths. Those things needed to eat a thousand to three thousand pounds of vegetation a day. You go to where those mammoths were found. There's not that much vegetation there now. And they were frozen in an ice age, in a glacial cycle. It's much right. warmer on Earth now than it was when they were frozen. So what were they eating? Don't, I mean, if there's not that vegetation there now, don't tell me there was that vegetation there when we were in a glacial cycle. The answer is that right. they were closer to the equator, and then the Earth put them at the polar region very quickly. Um, and it froze. And, and they then freaking they, froze they, they quick. Froze. And, yeah, it, it, probably with the help of a massive amount of ice water inundation, frozen mud, yeah. maybe even mm. some plasma cooling from the solar micronova because it's going to burn some things, but also plasma cooling is a thing. Earth is a capacitor. It's going to take in that energy and blast that energy back out as well. I don't want to get too deep into it, but you can do an internet search for plasma cooling and you'll probably find several articles on it. Uh, it's a very real thing. I see we're see looking on the screen. This will be the new Earth's orientation after it flips at some point in the next 10 to 25 years. Antarctica and uh, Greenland, both at the equator, the United States basically just shifts down into the southern hemisphere. Uh, places like Colorado and Pennsylvania will be same latitude, but Montana and Arizona are going to swap climates. Canada and Mexico are going to swap climates. Um, Wild. Yeah. And it's really a shame that Europe is going to be so lambasted by the actual disaster because, I mean, that that's going to be like heaven. A hundred years, a hundred years after this disaster, Europe right. is like th the new golden land. It means does it you, you look go back and weather, forth? Yeah, to the same position. So like pretty last much, time, much was it look thing. like that? Okay, pretty, pretty much. much. You know, and you know, so. In the model we've got there, um, we've got basically Ecuador and Brazil at one polar region, and we've got, you know, there you go, and we've got the Northeast Indian Ocean at the other one. Now, the Bermuda Triangle and the Dragon's Triangle, which are also on here right now, and I, I can't believe you pulled this up because I was literally going to mention these things. Um, <laughs> those may have been previous polls, and so maybe it's not oh, super oh. but it's very close. And for those who don't know what the Dragon's Triangle is, there are two Bermuda Triangles on this planet. Yes. It's just one from in Asia, and they call it the Dragon's Triangle. But what's interesting is they actually did the math on this. And if you could somehow unlock the crust from the mantle, the ice weight of Greenland and the ice weight of Antarctica, the part of Antarctica that is just south of Australia, will want to tilt us like this. And if you take Greenland and you pull it to the equator such that the part of Antarctica just south of Australia, is also at the equator. It puts those new poles where they are now. And it just so happens the north and south magnetic poles are on a collision course for one of those uh, new polar regions 
that you would get if you tilted the earth in the way that the math says you would. And for those who uh, need a little bit more on the physics side, anytime you have a spinning ball, if there is any weight distribution that's not perfectly homogenous, you know that the greatest weight wants to spin at the equator. And so after right. the last flip, the earth equalized and then snow started building at the polar regions. Um, this would be a pretty good moment to address, I guess, um, what always comes when we get to this point. They say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If the North and South Poles go to the equator every 12,000 years, why do we have evidence of ice there that's much, much older than that? Much older than that. And there are two good answers to that. One, I don't trust their isotope dating for any. <laughs> They honestly can't tell the difference between one season layer and one snowstorm layer. There's major problems. Um, in fact, they just tried a new isotope method dating the ice caps in Tibet. And they thought they originally thought they were more than 500,000 years old. Now they're saying maybe they are no older than 13,000, which is <laughs> over a major difference. Over half a million <laughs> a bit. to maybe 13,000 people. <laughs> uh, just, right. you know, a slight adjustment. But that's what only half the story. That's only half the story. The other half is, do you know there are still glaciers in the tropics today? There are still wow. glaciers in the tropics today. And again, we're not in a glacial cycle. We're, we're 12,000 years into an interglacial warm period. If there are still glaciers in the tropics today, after 12,000 years of an interglacial warm period, I assure you that during the past times, which were glacial periods for the 90,000 years before then, there's no way Antarctica is going to melt in a glacial cycle. If we still have glaciers in the tropics today, when it's uh, the warm Holocene of the last 12,000 years. And so um, that plus the fact that they can't carbon date things to save their lives kicks that ice question out the window. And th that's one that's come up repeatedly over time. And I have to keep repeating myself with that one. But um, yeah, so th this is the only way to explain the mammoths. Um, Project Nanook, major white in the 1940s. This is still not being admitted by the government. Luckily, he kept all of the documents and kept the Pentagon documents to give to his son to publish in World in Peril. When they went up there to what is now off limits to people because it is a nature reserved area, um, mm. they found in the Arctic alternating layers of tropical and polar fossils. A lot of them were just plant matter and other things like that, but they could still tell like there's this layer of polar fossils and then tropical fossils, then polar, tropical, one after another. The only way to explain all of these things together is by this galactically driven solar system shift that includes a solar micronova and the earth turning over during a geomagnetic excursion. Yeah. Well, I mean, Incredible. it's pretty clear, like at least 12,000 years ago, we know something happened. Something started an ice age, something ended it, something restarted it and something ended it. And uh, I think it's a really good point to bring up that like, we can't just have some evidence we need to have all of it like it it right. really to explain because it's so bizarre it is such a bizarre thing uh, geologically speaking for something to happen that quick right that's uh, that's right. why i find it odd that that randall carlson wouldn't you know listen to the the your son i don't even want to say here's theories the, anymore but you know the thing. Uh, at here's this the point thing. I don't talk to him on the phone anymore because I don't have like 90 to 180 minutes to just sit there and listen to the dude. <laughs> uh, every, every time I call him. We, we saw his, dude, his, last pan, his last panel at Cosmic Summit like went on for hours. We had to actually go. <laughs> like I, I remember looking once. I, I had 11 phone calls with the guy over the period of about three and a half months. And then I just decided I couldn't do it anymore. And those 11 phone calls, I had logged 24 hours of time. And I swear, <laughs> wow. I, I, I maybe said 200 words throughout the entire 24 hours. The dude literally just, but that's not what the point. The point is that uh, at some point uh, during there, uh, Randall was into it. He got it. He understood it. Everything was clicking for him. And then yeah. just as what happened with Graham Hancock, they realized, wait a minute. 
this makes my entire life's work nonsense. This debunks what's in my books. This debunks every major talk I've ever given. And it, it would be personally disastrous for them to actually That's why admit. it's really disappointing. That, that's it's because scary. they talk about that exact same thing with the established, you know, oh, archaeologists. And, and it's there's like a reason they know it so well. There's a reason they uh, yeah, know it's it. Like, so. It's like, come on, Graham. Come on, Randall. Like, Here, I, I got to tell you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I got to tell you, you'd be amazed at how many people who seem like they're on our side are not on our side in that way. Mm. 2015. Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles. They called it the panel that will never be beaten. George Norrie moderated me, Graham Hancock, Greg Braden, David Wilcock, and Nassim Harriman. It was, it was the most talked about thing leading up to the show. And yeah. right before we went on, I go up to the group who's talking there. And they all kind of like, well, welcome me and say hello real fast. And then they get back into their conversation. But what they were talking about is how they could mold what they were going to say to help sell each other's books and sell each other's retreats and excursions. You know, a bunch of those guys, they're like, come to Turkey for two weeks, you know, come to Costa Rica for two weeks, taking people. They were basically saying, all right, well, how can we manipulate and tie these things together so that we can sell our stuff. And at one point, Greg Braden looked at me and I must have had this look on my face like I was about to murder six people. <laughs> um, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And Greg right. Braden nudged Nassim and Nassim looked at me and he got it real fast. Uh, they both shut up. And But between Hancock, Wilcock, and... Um, and another guy who wasn't on the panel, but he was there. Uh, they literally just showed me who they were, and it was so disappointing. Um, I, they, it they is don't need to do that. It, it's unnecessary. Like well, nobody would care. The thing, I, in reality, no, but sort of yes, they did need to do that. And I'll tell you why. And this was something that Randall actually pointed out to me before me. Nobody ever has done this in a way that it could support them in life, that it could feed their children. Yeah. Now, you know, I've got massive YouTube channel. I've got seven books. Um, and, you know, we're in a day and age where this can actually be a career. Think about 10 years ago. If they weren't gaming the, the awake community, they wouldn't be able to actually make this their careers. And it's unfortunate, but true. And that I can, I hate it, but I understand it because, and Randall made a good point of the people in this field. I am the first one who's found a way to actually just stick to the stuff and actually make it a, a viable business. And it, it's not me. It's the fact that YouTube has progressed. The information has progressed. Um, the fact that I'm a speed reader with hyperthymesia doesn't hurt either. Uh, the fact that, you know, yeah, I don't need all the stuff you read. I don't need a huge team. I do the videos. I write the books. I do all this stuff. The only person I've needed is Catherine, the mother of my wonderful children, um, nice. who's basically been a phenom for the last decade with me. And so from a, I mean, could you imagine Randall Carlson trying to make videos on the, for, for YouTube? Or no. Graham Hancock trying to make videos for YouTube or without well, having he anybody. He does, but they're they are a slog fest. If you well that that and he, that and you know if it was going to be the kind of thing that would get people's attention and have the animations and the good editing, like Graham doesn't know how to do that stuff. Nassim doesn't know how to do that stuff, um, and so it. Oh, on the one I mean, hand, Randall's got people like who work with him, who keep him focused on the podcast. And I think the podcasts are great. Uh, so, but yeah, he, we, it would be great. If he, made he did. He did a video with after school, which is fucking awesome. And it was just like 10 minutes out of one of his talks. And I don't know if you ever heard of after school. What they do is they uh, I did an interview with him. He animates 
he animates it with like a whiteboard but he does like great animation and it kept it like 10 minutes and it's like one of the better randall carlson but he definitely needs to break that down uh, 10 minutes like it's down to 10 minutes and it makes sense um with wow. randall you gotta you got like you have to commit 10 hours now i'm fine with committing 10 hours not everybody can do that you have figured out a way to do these like really nice bite size you know three to four minute videos with your space weather that that are building a narrative over time i think that's a much better way to do it as far as like yeah. watching i love your daily video. videos yeah. too it's so so great it's quick. yeah yeah this is what's happening with the sun and, and, check it out and, and, and they're also but they like like you said they're building on each other if you watch the playlist there's a narrative not a narrative but there's a story in that playlist that you're yeah. building up over time and uh it's really cool it's really well done hey, you need to be able to keep track of what's happened you need to be gauging how much people are understanding knowing if you need to slow down knowing when you can take the next step and explain the next thing um storytelling is an art to some mm -hmm. degree and um it's most important of all when you are doing it for the right reasons and you're trying to tell the truth so authenticity is the currency of the future something we've been saying uh, our, my friend robert meyer burnett has been saying that and and like that that's what blew up the ufo community dude like they just started gaming and pushing disclosure and all this fucking crazy shit instead of just like hey let's find out what's real and then they dude, started infighting and yeah it's uh, one of the out. worst things that happened and some people figured it out you know those some people that claim like i can summon ufos yes come out with <laughs> me on this night to this place yes. the thing is all they were doing was they had the satellite tracking app and they were like okay wait on this night from this location this satellite's going to be visible overhead based on where the sun is in the reflection. They had to do a little bit of math, but th they would literally just figure out when a satellite would be a little bit extra bright at what time. And they were like, come with me. I will summon a satellite at exactly 724. And it's like, that's oddly specific, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, yeah. that's that's what blew it up. It's it the, the, yeah. the that's where it became woo woo. And uh, I don't mind going over crazy topics as long as it's like, hey, let's talk about it. Let's not talk about it as fact. And, oh, let's not become a cult and go out there and, like, summon UFOs and meditate aliens. for aliens. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I believe in aliens. Like, I, I don't think that we're alone in the universe. It's just that it's not – the topic's not immune to grifting, which no. sucks. Which sucks. Which yeah. really sucks. Anyway. And it takes advantage of, of everybody who supported this and because there is a truth out there. We just want to know what it is. You know, I don't care whose who's theory it is. I don't give a shit. Uh, I just, you know, I, I love hearing new ideas. And I think this new idea, like, we all know a younger dry has happened. It, it happened. Yeah. How it happened, Definitely. we can debate it all day long. And I hear ideas that are better. I would just say, hey, maybe we should lean towards this one a little bit. It still happened. We still lost, like, all the megafauna pretty much all at once, you know, here in America, I'll particularly. What, Robert Shock's idea that the younger Dryas ended in just a couple of days to maybe a couple of hours due to super flaring mm. from the sun is so it's so correct. Um, it is absolutely on point. What's interesting is all the, all the Zoroastrian and the stories from India, they described this cosmic level disaster, but then a golden age that immediately ensues. Why is this? Well, the solar micronova blasts things obviously and then it also causes a, a, a rapid freeze because there's a lot of dust produced in every kind of nova event and that's not only going to be in between us and the sun but it's going to be deposited into our atmosphere and so we're going to have a very very cold couple of weeks but the micronova recharges earth's electromagnetic system and our magnetic field bounces back to full strength and after a micronova the surface of the sun is trying to reorganize and get itself back together there's going to be massive super flares on a daily basis for weeks which are going to basically cook up the inside of the solar system and then the dust which was blocking the sunlight and helping to cool us initially acts as an insulative feature and helps warm the planet back up and so Literally everything that was once thought of as crazy, like, oh, these rapid freezes, oh, the, the rapid return of a golden age. You know, 
What happens after after the Super Bowl? They're literally battling like crazy, but the moment the final whistle blows, they're all shaking hands, happy, hugging each other. Somebody's like, I'm going to Disneyland. Um, <laughs> this is literally what – this is the cosmic Super Bowl followed by a golden age. If you can get through it, there's a good chance you're going to make it. Anyway, yeah. what else do you want to know before I go make ribeyes? Adam? Uh I, I don't know. I, I that was a great conversation. Surviving I, quickly. Yeah. Like like before the the yeah, the cliff notes on surviving, so except it, if you're in Europe because you're screwed. Sorry, Europe. In addition to the things we mentioned earlier, get away from the coastline, get away from big cities, get in high elevation, and have a way to go underground. Even a root cellar will do. Right. Obviously, oh, I know what my question what I wanted to ask you. All right, when go ahead. The astro when the astronauts came back from the moon and oh, they yeah. were all depressed, okay? Do you think it's because they discovered that aluminum or at least uh, confirmed it, it, the Adam and Eve story? It was all the glass. It was the glass. It, the, it was glass the glass balls they were finding. Glass balls and the glassed over rocks. Um, right. Which were burned. It, it's basically the moon's version of vitrification. Um, right, right, right. It confirmed yeah. the Adam and Eve story, basically, right? And yeah, that's, basically. that's what I gathered. Yeah. Well, they looked depressed I, I when it. they came back. They didn't not look like, hey, we just conquered first men in space. They looked right. like yep. they, they saw they saw darkness <laughs> and stared it in the eye, you know. Well, you know, they, they had actually when they announced to the world that this is what they were that they were going up there, that's not when they knew they had to go up there. They figured that out in the late 40s and early 50s after Major White and Project Nanook in the Arctic, that mm. opposite layers thing I was talking about. Right, right, right. They they were they reported that back. There were many Pentagon meetings about that with the OSS. And if you don't know what the OSS is, that's the Office of Strategic Services, which morphed into the CIA. Mm -hmm. um, they were there, too. And them and the Rand Corporation, who still to this day has their hand in so many secret government things, all determined that the Earth does a 90 degree flip, that this is a, a geomagnetic excursion and all these other things. But at some point between the late 40s, early 50s, and when they decided they needed to go to the moon, they figured out, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why does this happen? How does the earth actually do this? And Einstein died trying to figure this out. He was trying, mm -hmm. all right, well, what if we had so much ice weight that it just broke the crust off? Or what if this, but they didn't have all the tools in the toolbox. Believe it or not, when Einstein and about eight other major physicists were trying to figure this out back then, not one of them thought to look at the sun. Not one of them thought to look at earth's magnetic field. And so it was major white in the late forties, early fifties that told them, okay, no, this does tie in with the magnetic field, but that still doesn't explain how the crust can become unlocked from the mantle, allowing it to tip over for that. You need the solar micronova, which actually induces enough electromagnetic energy to super melt the crust mantle transition area, because basically right now it's rock, rock, rock. And then semi-rock, almost liquid, semi-rock, almost liquid, and then liquid mantle. It's not like it's just a lake with plywood crust, yeah, you know, able yeah. to float around. It's it's these partial melt areas that keep it locked in place. But that zap from the micronova, which induces electricity throughout the entire planet, and the most conductive area is the low velocity zone in between the crust and the mantle. It's just where the most, we can measure this today, even during minor solar storms. It's where the most induction occurs. And when that happens, there's going to be so much uh, thermodynamic activity going on from the electric current running through there that it's going to flash melt the bottom of the crust and unlock it in that way. Um, before we get back into the, some survival stuff, for those who are asking about Hawaii or asking about Yellowstone and like, okay, well, if the planet goes like this and like this, how is it the same areas have repeated volcanic eruptions uh, if they're not over the same volcanic hotspot? Volcanic hotspot? It's a liquid mantle. What do you like? Like there's just a hot spot in an ocean? <laughs> No, those are holes in the bottom of the crust. And it doesn't matter where you put them on the planet. It's going the to allow remain. magma. You're welcome. Okay. It's not a vault. It's not a magma hotspot in a liquid mantle that's churning around like crazy. It's a hole in the bottom of the crust. Now, 
here's the best thing I can say, because most people can't move to the highest elevation areas and get away from the tsunamis. Noah's Ark, probably a real thing. And you can float away because this is not a two mile high wave like from the movie 2012. Think of it as a fast moving and long lasting high tide. Basically, the water level is going to rise two to 10 feet a minute all day long. Now that all sucks. Long. Going it all day long, like hours and hours and hours. Now that's, that's going to destroy everything in its path. But it's also not something that I mean, like if it's only rising that quickly. I mean, we're talking like this for hours and hours and hours. You can float away, but you might want some advice about how to float away. One. The chances of you floating back to your exact spot after the waters recede, virtually none. You're going to want to take stuff with you. Mm -hmm. Two, did you see the Japan tsunami after 2011? It's not just yeah. water. It's cars. It's people. It's trees. It's rocks. It's pieces houses. of houses. Everything. It's shrub. You're, you're not going to want an inflatable. Okay, <laughs> something that no. something that you pump up and can easily be punctured is not going to make it. The right. last piece of advice I do have. Well, I suppose I have two more. One, learn how to survive because uh, such that wherever you land, you can start again. It's a tall order, I know, but people do it every day. So learn what it, learn what it's going to take to start over. And the last thing is, let's say you do manage to float away and you've got a lot of supplies and you've got a sturdy enough floatable thing that it's not it, a tree can hit the side of it and you're not going down. First, you're going to be floating in one direction for several hours as those waters rise. Then all of a sudden, you're going to stop. And then you're going to start drifting the other direction. When this happens, get to land as soon as possible. Whether that's some kind of a sail, whether you're paddling, whether you have to abandon your supplies and swim. Because you are in the midst of being dragged out to the middle of the ocean. You're in the worst it, rip current ever. <laughs> it would be a damn shame to survive all of this only to wind up in the middle of the sea. Um, that would be bad. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, outside of that, you know, think of normal prepping stuff. But imagine it's prepping forever. So not just food and water, but seeds, pre-industrial tools. Um, everybody should have a frontal lens. Eventually a match is going to run out. Eventually a lighter is going to run out. Do you know what a frontal lens is? It's those lens. It's the, like a piece of plastic. They make them as small as credit cards, but there's basically all oh, these like lenses. The lines. It focuses the that sunlight. Focus. One area. Right. Okay. It, it's right. basically the same as like a magnifying glass to burn ants, except it's a super version of that. And it's not right. a magnifying. Glass. You can't actually use it to see up close. But it and it's it's spelled weird, weirdly. It's F R E S N E L, and if you take care of it, it is a fire source forever. Mm -hmm. um, I recommend every prepper have one of those. Um, nice. Living if you're living in America and you have access to firearms, exercise your Second Amendment. Might need it. Um, other than that, pay attention. Awareness. This is going to sneak up on a huge portion of the population. It's not going to sneak up on the people that watch my show. There are there's stuff to look for. And even if it's just a few hours notice, that could be the difference. A few, if you have six hours notice on the rest of the world, you can get out of your city. If you wait until the sun turns red, you ain't getting out of the city. Have you ever seen them try to evacuate Miami when they think a hurricane's coming? It takes days to do that. And the people aren't trying to kill each other. When the no. sun turns red, there will be no more civility. Everyone's going to realize it's it. This is the end. Uh, Every people man for will himself, be, and it truly is. Seeing each other in the street, um, people will be doing the worst kinds of things. It'll be hell on earth until the cosmic Super Bowl is over and uh, the new golden age begins. We got all rebuild with no internet. Yeah. It'll be a better yeah. world. Hopefully. Better world. Uh, ben, thank you for coming on. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming on Easter. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Happy Easter, everybody out there. 
Uh, and uh, yes. please tell the fine folks where they can find you. This is a great channel, by the way. Great channel. Yeah. YouTube channel, Suspicious Observers on Twitter, or I guess it's X now, which I will be calling Twitter forever. Uh, mm -hmm. And Space Weather News at Sun Weatherman. And I hope to talk to you again someday, man. This was great. Uh, have have fun with your family. Thanks for coming on and taking some time with us. We appreciate it. Th that yes, logo man. is uh, that logo is how you know you found me. All right, guys. Go. Hey, I, I appreciate this. This was fun. You guys seem like cool folks. Thanks for having Thank me. Cheers. You. You're all right. In our book Seriously. too, Ben. Take care, Definitely. buddy. Bye. Right on, guys. Cheers. Yeah, he he was doing a live stream. Well, he does live streams every so often. And uh, <laughs> oh, they're so when, funny. The Q and A's <laughs> when when uh, when you get when he gets people in his chat that are asking questions that are just so obvious. Or if you had if you like watch his stuff, you would know the answer too, right. <laughs> you should see how mad he gets. He gets <laughs> he's like, all right, hold on. We're putting the, the show on pause. I got to call this guy out for not doing yeah. his damn homework. And I'm like, oh shit! Yeah, he's like got it's a funny. rule board as well. Yeah. On things he yeah. can ask. I'm like, I just don't want to piss this guy off, right? But uh, he's he, he's fantastic. So if you guys don't know, definitely go follow him. He he's great. The daily updates are great on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, they're fantastic. It's all good. We understand you can't watch everything. I <laughs> do. That happens. I'm on a live stream. It's like, oh god. <laughs> Uh, True. Did you hear, did you hear Victoria Alonso got fired? It's like I just put out a video two days ago on it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh, it, no, nobody goes to the YouTube pages. They just don't. <clears throat> I'm one of the only ones who does on this planet. Probably I I when I want to see something from you, Adam or Garrett or X Ray Girl, I go to your page. I'll see you pop up in my subs. Watch you, basically, Adam's live streaming. X-ray girls playing some damn game doing fucking sit-ups, squats, or whatever the <laughs> fuck you're doing. Um, and Garrett's, you know, fighting for democracy. <laughs> Usually. Oh, hi, Garrett that. again. Hey, hey Garrett, you want to pull up that FJ video real yes. quick? It's yes. fucking hilarious. It's the same color as mine, I think, too. It. Did I close it? Damn. Oh, wait, I got it right here. I got it. That was a fascinating... Oh. Oh. Interview Man, for there. for the people who don't know, someone just asked what the Adam and Eve story is. I, I oh, we we'll did, tell you we in did, just a second. We okay, yeah, let's watch this. Yeah. Um, we talked about cool. it a lot, but we didn't actually say what it is. So I'll, I'll explain it in a sec. Yeah. So this is FJ Cooper on the beach. Oh my this god! This is your cell phone? No, this isn't me. This is somebody driving. I just saw because I, I have an FJ. So dumb. To watch, do watch, that. watch, 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 <gasps> watch, watch, watch. Woo! Oh my god! And he gets up and he's fine. Like he's, he's actually got a so lucky he fell in the water. Yeah. Uh, he'd be dead. Fall. Yep. Yeah, he's, he's like, ow, my leg, my leg. <laughs> that, wow. Escalated quickly. <laughs> that escalated wow. quickly. Bro flew right out of his passenger window, man. It's like, holy shit. That's insane. Or no, it was, man, he could, it? he could have been no, crushed. Window, yeah. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Lucky that wasn't a belly I laughed because he lived. Okay, I wouldn't be laughing if he that died. But holy shit, that mm -hmm, was funny. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, FJs. You got there's. I'm not there's a fan. A, I'm not a I'm fan a, of the FJs. I'm a, hey, massive blind spots. Do not yeah. stop or turn up on a dime. You got to be a skilled driver to drive them. You just got to be. <laughs> and I, I have skill. So there you go. <laughs> All right, I'll give They're you that. Fucking awesome cars. They're awesome cars. All right. Dude, so the Adam last, and Eve story. Oh, last, go ahead. by the way, last uh, last SUV fully manufactured in Japan. Some of the best fucking like they will last forever. Sorry, but the FJ Adam and Eve story. Yes, FJs. okay, that makes more. Maybe maybe they're for pe small people because you know I feel like you're tall for J Japanese standards. Oh, he's right? like yeah, I'm like average. I'm like you know, average. No, guy, I think you're pretty but... tall for Japanese. Oh, I mean, for Japanese, Japanese guy, Japanese yeah. standards. People's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so the Adam and Eve story. This is a. Uh, I forget the guy who who wrote the story. Actually, I could. I, I have. I'll, I'll, look, it I'll look it up. I'll look it up. You go right you go. here. It, it's he's by. Called, he's called God. Clay. <laughs> Chan. All right, Chan Thomas. Chan the Thomas who, is the guy who wrote the the story, and it is essentially the beginning of life again after a cataclysmic event. 
and it talks about um, essentially a micronova going off. It doesn't. I don't think it actually cites a micronova, but the CIA basically took this and buried it. They didn't want anyone reading it. And I think in 96, 1996, they re, re they they released it. Maybe it was a Freedom of Information or yeah, it, no, Art that, Bell that came later. Covered was it. it Art Bell? Many, many oh, Art Bell ago, covered yeah. it. That's the first place I heard of it. Yes. So it was redacted down to 53 pages. It's like a 260 page book and they redacted the shit out of it. And only 53 pages were uh, released. In, in fact, on Ben's channel, Suspicious Observers, he does a video. Uh, this was what Gary was referencing earlier. Cosmic Disaster is the name of the video. And he actually breaks it down and reads a lot from Dude, the book that was unredacted. Your- Sorry to interrupt. Have your notebook right. ready to watch that because, like, yeah, yeah. Melissa was watching it with me and she kept on asking questions. I'm all, Shh, I can't, I'm trying yeah. to keep up with this well, guy and I cannot to. do it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. He, I'm taking he's notes. He's got a lot, lot of a information. A lot of information. He so, opened yeah, he the transcript. I found that easy to read while he talked and that helped oh. me process. Dude, that's a yeah, good yeah. idea. Sorry, Mel, by the way, but like my brain just yeah. could not. It was overloaded by like an hour and a half in. But yep. uh, it's a but it's an amazing video. If really if is. you want to know about the Adam and Eve story, I suggest actually watching that video, Cosmic Disaster, because he actually takes what was like the stuff you could read from the Adam and Eve story. And he he points out and brings actual evidence and real life things to corroborate uh, some of the stuff that's in it, or actually a lot of the stuff that they're talking about in the story. So it, it it's like kind of proving that it is something that the CIA was trying to stop. And it makes sense to me because if the world found out that, oh yeah, there's a major cataclysm coming um, that we can't stop and most of the planet's going to die. Uh, so good luck. I think the world would very quickly fall apart very quickly society would crumble if people it, look at society as it is right now and it's not in good shape like holy yeah, shit if there's, imagine if there's nothing else holding it together they, like hey yeah. by the way all you that are going wild right now um there's no hope uh so <laughs> you're all probably all gonna die G- guess what would happen you know yeah. dude of course they want to keep that Meanwhile, they keep control just completely ignore all the giant tunnels we're digging <laughs> Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. <It's> for <laughs> right we're it's for yeah. shooting particles at each other it's like oh sure isn't it weird uh, like i okay with the with the total eclipse coming that we're gonna fucking miss damn it because yep. we're going to the meetup um mm-hmm. that like mm-hmm. uh they are turn closing, it on so they are closing some roads uh truckers uh in certain areas truckers cannot drive that day really? um, oh wow it all makes sense if you think about it though uh, um, I think some schools are closing, um, and people are making it out to be, uh, sticks did a great video on it today explaining that. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's just dangerous. D- Jane dangerous. Like for trucks, if they're, they get distracted and they stop and they cause them looking at it pile yeah. up, you know, it makes sense. And it's, and it's just for like I a couple see that hours then, yeah. anyway. So, sure. um, but yeah, there's a lot of, but they are firing up CERN for the first time in two years. I, oh, I was going to say, I hope he be says great. that cause that's going to happen. Yeah. During the eclipse. That's like weird. When it, when it, oh, the eclipse. All right, turn it on. Let's see what happens. Woo. Yay. They're firing, they're firing some rockets at it too or something. And uh, yeah, that's that like my kind of thing. Right yeah. <laughs> Mesa. By the way, April 23rd, April so 23rd, excited. the return of Skin that's Rock and Ranch. Yes. Woo. I'm excited. Fire I'm excited to go back. Frequencies to 1.6 gigahertz. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So wait, Let's are go. we are we not gonna have a show for a couple weeks now? Is that what uh, I you said something like that in the beginning? Yeah. Vegas. Okay. So when we're in Vegas. We're in Vegas. Uh, so yeah, next not... week we have a show. Yes. The 14th. But then the we don't. Week after. Okay. Okay. So it's just one day that we're gonna miss this month. One day, you're okay. not gonna miss. I might miss it, but you're not gonna miss it. We'll find out. If I leave early enough, then I can make the show. I got oh, no, I see. Okay. In the chat. So well, if okay. I leave, sure, sure. I it, so we'll see. 
so yeah, I have to make uh, a couple of videos. And once I'm done making those couple of videos, if I can leave Saturday, then we can do a show Sunday because I'll be, I'll be there pretty much close to being there already. So I, I want to, I want to, but during the week of Vegas there, yeah, there's not going to be a nooner. No, uh, I will not be on real BBC. There will be no forbidden frontier, but I will be on Friday night tights. We will do cool. a Friday night tights. Cause I do want to kind of have fun in Vegas. Uh, our first super, uh, <laughs> Let me read the super chat and then we got to plug something kind of important because sure. I want you to go, Adam. Biggity. Oh, you can't. I, God damn. I know. It's time to knock up your wife, dude. Jesus. Hey, hey, um, <laughs> God. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Priorities. Uh, Rob the Builder for five dollars says, Hail Gary, can't find my RSVP e email for Vegas meetup or a screenshot of it. Am I SOL? Uh, email X ray girl and Gary at Neurotic. Or you can arrive, which would be my wife. Yes. Uh, you you'll could be uh, Twitter me or so. something. I could check yeah. it too. Yeah, we'll 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 check it. Thank um, you, Rob. If, if Rob, if you've already made reservations and stuff out there, like just yeah, you just talk to Mrs. Neurotic. She she she'll take care of. It. She's our customer service specialist. That was my bad. I didn't set it up to send a confirmation email. So my uh, bad. We got that fixed yes. though. We got it fixed. We did. Okay. So next time. <laughs> We're not professional. Progress, not perfection. <laughs> it's my bad. I mean, uh, my technically thought, my we're supposed process, to be professionals, but we're not. <laughs> my thought process was like, nobody wants these emails all in their email <laughs> box. I guess they do. Makes sense. But Rob, thanks for letting us know. And uh, yeah, just to shoot us. A, sorry, you have to shoot us an extra email. Okay, so Cosmic Summit, guys. Cosmic Summit. Let me find my... Do, 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 she do. said uh, Melissa, there, there, there could be a virtual way to, to a be there. A virtual pass, yes. yes. So like last year, uh, yeah, we yeah. have an affiliate link. We're going to have an affiliate link to where you can watch it uh, as a live stream, basically, like yep. last year. It's uh, in the I'm excited about Robert Shock. I really like Robert Shock. That really is awesome that he's there. Uh, and of yeah, course, that's ben, cool. our boy Ben from Uncharted ben, X. Yep. And, and Randall. Luke. And Luke. Luke. I, I see Luke out. over there. I see Luke. I see Luke. Yeah. He had the best presentation last time. It was so good. So the virtual pass is 50 for both days. If you're interested and cannot make nice. it. And that like and that's all day for two days. Uh and you own it. You can watch it at your leisure. You can watch it live. It's pretty cool. Can you download it? Um, I probably not. Yeah, I guess that makes probably sense. Probably not, but but we have an affiliate link, so you can check it out and in uh, the description. Help us out down in the description. What's below. an Anunnaki pass? By the way, oh, Y files still waiting for our Anunnaki video. Y files. I know you're on vacation. I thought the vacation was over already. No, he still had a couple of weeks. Oh, gosh, dang it! Hopefully, he's working on the Anunnaki video. Um, you can get a Randall Carlson foot rub on the, the Anunnaki what? pass. I don't know it what that really means. Say that? But Yep, it, it does. does. Whoa, it that's does, weird. It what? Does say that? What? Oh wow, I have no idea. that's is it, weird. Okay, is it Randall Carlson giving you a foot rub, or is it yeah. called like the Randall Carlson? <laughs> you know, it's like a it's a foot rub specialist that's giving you a very special foot rub that's called the Randall Carlson. You know? it, 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 it's like three. It's three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like you better Desert get your sandstorm pass. except for a foot rub. <laughs> oh, <God>. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, things I never thought I'd see at an event. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna go. Yep, I think you have a table there, I believe. Yep. Um, yep. so yeah, nice. So we're gonna. So go. you should subscribe so we can get to a hundred, and then give you guys some merch. Yep. Probably not going to contact in the desert this year whoa, because whoa, we're going whoa. to that. Because well, it's three weeks in a row. So there's there's um. There's Dallas Fan Expo. Oh, no, it's Contact in the Desert. It's the same yep. as last year. Contact in okay. the Desert Fan Expo. And then this. I ain't doing that again. I'm not doing three that was pretty. So. It was pretty brutal. That was, that was too that much. That was a lot so, for you guys. Get so Contact true. in the Desert. You know, I'll watch the DVDs later or something like that. It, it'd be, it sucks to miss it, but like I'd rather go to go see Robert Shock and Randall. Yeah, uh, definitely. And, uh, and Luke and Ben. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Those guys, they're cool guys. 
Yeah. Plus, you know, George Howard runs it and he's a cool dude. So yeah, we'll we'll have fun. We'll have fun. That'll be our and then we're we're also doing a little trip where we're gonna be vlogging. I mean, we're also going to Tombstone, Arizona, but we're doing uh like yeah. our, our aliens and western kind of theme little after my kid graduates, we're going on a little road trip, which That's Garrett cute. hopefully you can meet us on at some point, maybe a yeah. tombstone. And then uh, go see while. some petroglyphs go and uh, yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. It's happening then, on Thursday, Gary. Oh. Say whoa! Oh, oh we no got way. it! No way! Yes. Oh yes! Because uh, PJ, as well as uh, Logan here, uh, with the uh, member message. Uh, uh thanks. Uh, Anunnaki episode Thursday. Fuck yeah. Good name, Logan, Finally. by the way. Good name. Finally. He's been promising it forever. Yeah, he has. Well, it's going to be epic. I can't wait. Um, Yeah, so we that was really fun talking to Ben. I know, Adam, you were pushing for that. I'm glad we finally did it. Yes. Uh, we're going to have more guests on this year. Um, yes, already some lined up. The show's going to be going through some changes here in a couple months. You say Positive transitioning? Changes. We are, trans we are transitioning. What a day to <laughs> announce it. <laughs> yes. We're going to transition. Happy uh, Easter. To something. Uh, <laughs> but you can also listen to this show on correct me if I'm wrong, Audible, yep. Spotify, yep. Apple Music. Yep. I think Google Podcasts is ending. I don't know. I think it's just going to be called Google Music. And I'm supposed to re sign up for that. I guess I'll do it. But uh, I don't, does anybody even use it? But uh, yeah, you can listen to us. You can go Apple to nerdwatch.com. And listen to everything we do there. Uh, and uh, if you give us a review, it helps out a lot. Yeah. On any of those platforms. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, that's where we kind of, this is the, the one show I want to be everywhere. I just like wherever you can listen to it. Yes. Uh, you know, while you're driving. And maybe merch one day. I'm so oh, there'll be merch. There'll be merch. But there's the something else coming way. up that will lead to merch mm -hmm. that I can probably announce in like uh, a couple weeks, maybe a week. Ooh. I gotta what talk to you guys be? first, though. I don't know. Maybe. We've already spoken about it. Ah. Should I give him a hint? No. Yes. No. 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 Perhaps. No. Oh, the chat's gonna say yes. <laughs> of course. They first, they're gonna say yes. <laughs> uh, no. Happy Easter. There you go. I, I'll give you a hint. Green. Okay. That's Terrible your hint. hint. All right. All right. Terrible. Well, you hint. Get, it's supposed well, you to be get, a, yeah. supposed to be a hit hint. Uh, a hint. Henry Cavill. Oh, oh. <laughs> tiny <laughs> arms. <laughs> tiny Dude, arms. I love that your mistake, <laughs> your mistake led to so many articles oh being written from this show, by the way. So a show we don't even show? cover pop culture. Your mistake, all of a sudden it was Henry Cavill's <laughs> oh gonna God. be Captain Britain. It's like, no. Oops. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like I'm hearing from good sources that Henry Cavill's gonna be a, a Wolverine variant. It's like, oh, I wonder where you heard that. Is your good source a retard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Does yeah. Does make a good source? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I um, I, I've been on an ancient aliens bender, nice. and I watched a good one from season fourteen about uh, plagues and uh, viruses and stuff. And they go cool. into uh, how they could possibly come from space. And it's not really, they don't really, you know what? Sometimes the show like keeps it like real. Like it's from space, but it's just microbes from space, like falling from a comet and stuff. And they talk about how the Spanish flu started simultaneously on opposite sides of the world, like on the same day, like uh, uh, in Boston. Mm. It started in Boston and in India on the same day. It's like, how the fuck does that happen? Yeah. How the fuck does that happen? And, you know, some guys go, well, somebody aimed the comet at us. Or it's a comet. Uh, and they really, yeah, Giorgio and the scientists go to an ice cave and they dig out, like, ice worms and microbes that have been frozen for 10,000 years. They they unfreeze them. Boom, they're alive. And they're all this, they're, and they're replicating uh, and stuff. Oh, it's, great. That's, that's what I dangerous. Have. And then one scientist That's what, that's is what all, Garrett oh, yeah. caught from yeah. Zorbu. Freaking anyway, Zorbu. Yeah. And then the, the scarier thing is the one scientist said, oh, yeah, we're being bombarded by um, uh, 800, 80 million viruses per hour per square meter. From <laughs> what? That, bro, what? what? I don't so, even want to know that information. A lot, of, like, is, what am I supposed to a lot of it is insane. A lot of it is kicked up from Earth because they measured it. 
it's kicked up from earth and it's raining back down. So it's like microbes and shit. Okay. But he said not all of it is kicked up from earth and raining back down. Because there's constantly stuff raining down, dust and microbes and shit. Wow. Fuck, great episode, man. I was like, oh. You know, I, I that's how I'd spend my leisure time, how the apocalypse will happen. You know, <laughs> probably says more about me than anything, but uh, I find it very entertaining. It makes me enjoy life a little better, you know? Makes life that's a little good. sweeter. Uh, Red John uh, has gifted five Nerdrotic Live memberships. Thank you very much, Red John and Zorbu. Zorbu, is that? Are oh, you the reason? Ten. ten Nerdrotic Sorry, Live true. memberships. Yay! Doesn't make up for the illness you gave me. It was worth it. Thank you, Zorbu. It was worth it. Uh, I will gladly sacrifice your whole <laughs> <laughs> my entire family. Your, oh, your whole family is our goal. Your whole family? Oh, dude, yeah, we got wrecked. Yeah. Oh, that's we're all sick. Oh god! Sorry, Mahler sent me something about uh. Oh, somebody, I saw so, that. About something with trans, tiny arms. Uh, no, uh, happy trans of visibility day, and somebody complained about the lack of diversity in the white. Oh my god! It's like boys an that are girls. In the animated picture, it's like, oh, fucking that. Nothing says Twitter. <laughs> that is Twitter in a nutshell. God dang it. I was looking for something else. Okay. Okay. Girl does the math for me. That was $50, by the way. 10 megawatt. 50. Hey, uh, everybody out there, all you wonderful people in the chat, I hope you had a really good Easter. Uh, thank you for spending with us uh and um i don't care what visibility it's mental health awareness day apparently as well <laughs> so, no it's easter today it's easter it's that's the only thing that easter. i recognize you know what that's as it somebody somebody's not a christian it's pretty fucked up it's pretty fucked up uh, i'm not and, either and, and it's and that, easter today uh, yeah and that plausible deniability shit go fuck yourself on that, that well is, it's oh, just it the 31st it's just always the third. Fuck off with that shit. Shut that's up. gaslighting. Fuck yourself. That's that's my. So I got to say about it. Uh, estimate of the situation for twenty dollars. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, Ben. This I, but uh, I can kind of. Uh, ben, have you read the Adam and Eve story, the history of cataclysms? He not only read it, he has analyzed yeah. it, oh, broke yeah. it down. Find found alternate material that backs it up. Uh, the CIA classified it and describes what you're saying. 57 pages have been declassified in a sanitized version. It's a research paper about exactly this. And I love the fucking explanation for, well, the government, uh, they, they classified a lot of stuff. They overclassified things. Mm -hmm. That's not an answer. It's probably nothing because they overclassified things. That's that's not an answer on why they would classify this book at all. Um, I would love to find the full version. I, it's out there somewhere, like the unsanitized version. Somewhere, somewhere. It's out there. Josh Kelsey has dropped 20. Hey! And, and just leaves. And he just walks out like he's Zorbu, except he didn't violate Garrett. So <laughs> speaking of Zorbu. $25. Hey. Nice topic, Earthlings. Jeez, Zorboos is going to need some uh, alone time. Looks like Earth is going to get probed big time. Hope <laughs> your calculations are off. I'm just a working stiff who flies a UFO, you know. At least we fly away, but Bigfoot is screwed. I agree. Hey. So he said 2050. Later, By 2050. Probably. So we have, yeah. uh, in 2039, we have a massive asteroid. It's 2039, chat. It's around that time. Uh, there's a massive asteroid coming. Great. Uh, Ryan awesome. Kittle will get his wish that he will pass away before the age of 60. You know, he like, says that. He said 50, by the way. Oh, it was 50? Oh. He dang. says that. That's but wild. Then, That's a wild thing to say. you wake up and you're 50, right? <laughs> And you're like, I don't want to pass away. This is pretty. I just woke up at 40 and I'm like, holy shit, I'm 40. What? I got to shave yeah. my beard into a mustache. Yeah, <laughs> that's, ex that's exactly what I thought. Seventies porn star. 
I respect it, bro. Keep Thank it. you. Thank you. With the parts to match. Adam the Krieg. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Why? <laughs> Why would you? I, he set me up. I f- had to freaking spike the ball. <laughs> spike the wow, ball. Come man. on. Wow. <laughs> I don't need to know this about my friends. <laughs> Neil, Neil Horn for nine ninety nine. Thank you, Neil. Uh, once again, great show, guys. I really liked how Gary actually remembered to introduce Quarter Black Garrett. FNT was a glorious <laughs> shit show. <laughs> <laughs> Just subscribe to Ben's channel. FNT was, yeah, that was a, a good naughty show. one. Yeah, we got age restricted and demonetized. <laughs> I didn't even fucking bother fighting it because we earned it completely. Um, but that is an example of uh, letting the show go where it wants to go. There was nothing I could have done about that. It, it, it was, <laughs> it, you know, Gundam's there. We, we don't want to put too much blame on Gundam on this one. Because this it was, is not Gundam this time. It is not Gundam's fault. Uh, it was just the subject matter that we had this weekend, and uh, everybody was, I don't know. Uh, for one, Shad was completely sleep deprived again. So that's two weeks yeah, in a oh, row. Wow. Yeah. Sleep, sleep deprived Shad. Sleep deprived Shad is fucking he was great. Drunk, <laughs> yeah. basically. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, if you're podcasting and uh, don't be, you know, too rigid on those subjects. If uh, if something's funny, just let it go. And yeah, you could risk your channel. <laughs> that's all I, I that's all I was worried about. Is channel still up? Okay, good. Fine. <laughs> it's not going to get recommended to a lot of people. Whatever you can. Uh, but uh, they they didn't. Yeah, they didn't strike us for anything. That's true. Yeah. That's there you go. And we said some pretty horrible shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was so funny. I picked a good day to wear my Caucasian shirt. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Bigfoot for $25. <laughs> Damn, nice show, you homo sapiens. Uh, really uplifting. Uh, yeah, especially for Easter, right? Well, you know, <laughs> go find Jesus. <laughs> and is coming. Yeah, a lot uh, of people need much- to. Uh, not much to live for if Earth Mother is going to die. Bigfoot is contemplating ending it all. Uh, going to try pineapple pizza. Ha, ha, ha. Kidding. I'd, I'd never eat that, even if the world was ending. Oh, shit. Wow. You're lost. More for me, Bigfoot. More for you, me. Channel well, sir, beauty, not- Earth, Earth ain't going anywhere. I just wanted to say. Earth, Earth's just going to be gonna like, just oh. fine. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, oh yeah. I was, I've been meaning to suntan that side of my, my ass. Oh, good. Yeah, we could be on the op. Well, even if we're on the opposite side of the blast, there's the tsunamis to deal with. But, um, yeah. dude, this stuff has happened. We've had how many gr- five great extinctions on this planet that we know of? That we know about. That we know of. That we know. Right. Of. Uh, the Earth has been turned into a an ice uh, a snowball essentially the earth has also had a variance of two degrees from pole to pole in temperatures that's crazy actually fucking wild (laughs) okay but it's like dagobah but uh the earth has gone through lots of changes it's got a wobble it didn't start that way it didn't start that way something gave us that wobble so there was a time where we didn't have the four seasons uh and, and i'm not talking about the band Okay. Uh but yeah, it's it's gone through a lot a lot of changes. So, yeah. I mean, chances are you're fine. Uh but like we we get little ones all the time. I mean, what's the biggest disaster we've had recently? Natural disaster. Mm. Fukushima? That's wouldn't be I mean, I guess that's natural, but it's com- it would if the power plant didn't like get hit as yeah, bad, it wouldn't it wouldn't really well, tsunamis be... were still pretty bad and uh Japan yeah i mean moving it... like eight feet uh and it's true but i feel like shortening it the days been... <laughs> <laughs> um but i mean like but yeah we we still haven't had like uh krakatoa like krakatoa like a volcano like a the bad. last something, one in the millions huge was uh china floods in 1931 mm. so four million passed away who damn that's that's insane that's a lot that that's is a insane. lot at one time god yeah so it's it's you know you know here we've had katrina and uh you know fires and 
Uh, Canada was burning for like a year, mm -hmm. uh, but that's still not like on on the level of, you know, we. I mean, COVID. That's not a natural disaster. That was an unnatural disaster uh, performed by our government. That was pretty bad. That's a once in a lifetime thing. Uh, by the way, the government's reaction, not the actual cold. Just pointing that out. I don't give a fuck. Uh, Channel Surfer and Adam's all shut up. No? Get me demonetized. Wouldn't it be messed Flashbacks. up if you got demonetized? Over something I, said on <laughs> <laughs> I, I made that joke before and it, it really wouldn't surprise me, honestly. <laughs> it would. That'd be wild. Uh, but. Channel Surf for $9.99. Been trying to figure out uh, our cat is why our cat is scratching at the TV screen figured out he is trying to bury adam's mustache looking forward to seeing you guys in <laughs> vegas hail see you wow. in vegas hey, what's up, <laughs> that's a terrible thing to call adam's mustache a cat turd by the way shout out to cat turd on twitter which is one of the better names on twitter when it gets announced on regular news it's pretty funny yeah the controversy <laughs> over cat turd on twitter <laughs> 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 oh my god uh bobby hill 3323 for ten dollars says hello gary ben adam and bobby lee been following uh suspicious observers for six years now for newbies nice. uh no location questions no yellowstone do the homework <laughs> uh live the salt uh love the, love salt. the salt much love he has risen I asked, him about his rules. I asked him about he location. Risen. What's location questions? Like where he oh, lives? Oh, uh, is, is my location okay during the... Oh, I asked well, him. I... Shit, sorry. No, my no, bad. no. On his Q&A. He, he was being... Yeah, okay. yeah. He's on... He, You know, he's on our show. So you know, it's not his show. But, you know, it's still pretty funny. Well, I mean, if he puts it out there, uh, no Yellowstone. Yeah. No Yellowstone. <laughs> well, we, we didn't even... We actually... He did it unprompted. He He was like, oh, and by the way... For all those Yellowstone people out there, it's a <laughs> hole in the. Did you notice that he like yeah. totally was like, I have He's to so put this in it. here. <laughs> yeah, like people are going to ask. That was no, he, that well, was just a sliver. In uh, in on Bright Insight, he pointed out that like it's not under a lot of pressure either. So like it's not right. going to blow. Like if it goes, it's not a Krakatoa. It's it'll go it's like an Iceland. open wound, like Iceland. Yeah, like Iceland yeah. and parts of Hawaii. There'll be fissures. And it'll right. be bad if you're there, but it's not going to like blow up. It has blown up in the past, but that's when it was one under immense pressure. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's other volcanoes. I, like I'd worry more about long Valley. Long Valley is the one that's under way more pressure. Uh, look up long Valley, by the way, you, you know a, what? It's the, a super I, volcano. I, I still am bewildered by the fact that Randall Carlson, after listening and talking to Ben, didn't instantly go, all right, if the sun sh or if the earth shifted and the Pacific Ocean rushed this way onto uh, North America and then pulled all that water back out, that makes so much more sense to me than, well, Lake Missoula, obviously, but Randall doesn't believe that theory anyway. But like all that ice suddenly just melting and it just having like, boom, all this water. Listened to Randall a lot. He right. doesn't discount the sun. He does not. He, True. He, he 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 still favors the comet theory and stuff, but he's like, the sun could have been it. And even Graham has said that. Like even Graham has come out and said uh, he said it when we were we saw him. He's all listen. We can't count out the sun being part of this. Right. We can't. Um, but I think Ben's best argument is like it. Like there are so many factors in this that. And the and consistency that's the, that's, is that's huge. What the com, that's what the comet group has had now. You know, if we did go through the tail of a comet, it would have to be multiple strikes over a period of short period of time over almost the entire ice sheet that stretched from Canada to Europe. Now there are proxies that show that and that's why they believe that. And that's why there's right. a lots of, lots of science behind this. Um, I, I think we, we talk about all the ideas. How's that sound? We talk about all the ideas, and uh, like I, like I said, I'm kind of favoring the sun right now. Kind of leaning towards well, sun. Could be wrong. So the well, the the flood theory, right? That all the different civilizations on the planet right now, currently, it, if you trace back, they all have a flood myth, flood theory. And, and can I add that they had sure. prior? Most of them had prior knowledge. So there's the flood right. theory, and there's a story of somebody with prior knowledge. Right. Sorry. True. True. No. No. So. 
if if it was an impact theory and it hit the North American ice sheet and melted and s- say the oceans raised 400 feet, okay, 400 feet is a lot, right? It is a lot. But at the same time, it's not all over the like you know people lived inland you know it's not like people only lived on the outside and just it feels like the flood is more like instant everywhere flooded everything and i don't know this makes more sense to me if it was suddenly the oceans invaded the land and like he i I didn't know it was as slow as he was describing i i thought it would have been a lot faster like tsunami yeah but he was saying like like in the day after feel- tomorrow and it, like you know the, the just no, 2012 is it with the with the big freaking wave right that uh-huh. can happen if a huge meter lands in the middle of the ocean but what would happen is Chuck's water love. W- once once land starts getting involved it it the wave it, it decreases the power of the wave right yeah yeah exactly but mm-hmm. Even if it's like a, a mile high tsunami, tsunami is going to come in, like he said, like Japan. It's not going to be just one wave. It's going to be lots of fucking water building up and a lot of mm-hmm. other shit. And yeah, a here lot. in yeah, yeah. Texas, I'm like really far away from the Gulf. I'm not close to the Gulf, like at all. I'm in the middle of Texas, but we're only 600 feet high here. Right. That's our elevation. You have a little bit of head time, but you. Yeah. Not a I'm, lot. Yeah. Not a lot. And you'd have to go like northwest to start hitting some ev- elevation, or or at least north. You'd have to get yeah. to New Mexico pretty quick. Pretty quick. Um, uh, well met, you fine guys and ladies. And Gary, hey, as this wonky eyebrow. Hello. Sorry. What, Cheers. What, what did I just do? Nothing. That was I me. Good job. Oh no, What'd that was you me. Do? No, oh. I, I I went out of order a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, Juan Castle for four ninety nine says, "Happy Resurrection Sunday, Craig's. Your top thoughts on the Anunnaki, real or mythology? You fellows need to do a full, in depth episode on this topic. You know what? We will. We will. Let's do it. Uh, Let's do it on Anun- Sunday. Anunnaki were uh, essentially. I think what? it's real. Real. What they were is." Biblical angels, the watchers, who knows, who knows? I think it was just the the people before, like Ben was saying, he doesn't think that we're even close to where the Atlanteans were before this all happened 12,000 years ago. And I'm inclined to agree with that. So to the people who survived it, who actually were reset, if they were to even meet anyone along that, that power of what they had, they would have considered them godly yeah. and the and, anunnaki and, would have seemed gods when we say it ahead of us here well i don't want to speak for you adam but i think fine way way more in tune with the earth not needing to with electricity use, i think more importantly it, that's what it was is that they way understood more in tune how to yeah. understand how to harness the the energy that the earth naturally it exhibits and we don't do that they we, didn't need we, power lines we, we they built didn't need this to, on they combustion need plastic yeah they didn't need right. plastic no. they didn't need combustion they exactly didn't need leverage they they had other ways of building uh a civilization that was probably way more in tune with the environment and the earth and uh a little less destructive but maybe they went through that phase and got past maybe, yeah, it maybe. you know i i don't know and they just found a, listen i'm not some wacky fucking hippy dippy environmentalist uh but i think that Major corporations have absolutely stifled our progress, particularly recently. hundred uh, percent. Well, I mean, patents. we we had a chance. There was a, a split. Like if Tesla had succeeded and J.P. Morgan didn't actually cancel the whole um, Wardcliffe Tower experiment that he was doing and be trying to give free energy, like we might have actually been able to harness the Tulare current and been able to just like have everything just charged naturally from electricity that just occurs on the planet. Cause it is a big battery. Like we are, or a, a magnet more, uh, I think is more accurate. Like the earth is a big magnet and everything in yeah. this world exit is all about magnetic energy and electricity. So as, who knows? as David Hatcher Childress said, yeah, David Hatcher Childress uh, <laughs> said, uh, why did megalithic cultures in the distant, distant, distant past prehistory? Why did they use the, the the hardest things, the hardest rock, the biggest rock, 
and to make the most difficult structures possible for that time for supposedly people who are in loincloths and walking around right. bare, barefoot. It was because it was easy for them. That was the easiest way to make them. It's insane to think about. It doesn't make any fucking sense. None of it makes sense. Uh, get to, do, do, do. All right. Um, Derek for ten dollars. Ben, what are some of the events that look that we look for in the next five or ten years that will further prove your theory? Um, I can answer one. So he talked about the fact that they're they're now encountering more dust. Scientist has explained this by saying we have entered into a dust cloud, like our 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 solar system has entered into a dust cloud. Now, could that be a dust cloud? Or could that be the dust being attracted, you know, going to the sun prior to this event? Don't know. Don't know. But that is something. Yeah. (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. I think you got it. (laughs) Also, pay attention to the poles moving because they're moving along the line towards those points. Faster and faster every year. Yeah. Yeah. They are increasing in speed. So I want more cereal for $10. I almost said that right. So happy you got Ben on the show, the geomagnetic uh, excursion and solar partic- uh, particle forcing gives us plenty of evidence to abandon man-made climate change. All hail forbidden frontier. And he has risen. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, it's true. Earth, Earth can easily survive us right now. Oh yeah. Like um, just, you know, go on Google Earth and back out a little bit and, and, yeah, there's parts that are completely lit up, and then there's just really dark parts. Did you see the the Guyana president argue with the BBC guy, which was fucking funny? Did no, you see that video? I want to see that. So BBC uh, is interviewing, I think it's it's Guyana or something, one of those sure. countries. And uh, he's talking about uh, climate change and putting CO2 in the air. And I think that they're going to do, they're going to offer some oil reserves or something. They're going to do some drilling, right? And the guy just claps back and goes, wait a minute. We have a jungle. We have an entire fucking jungle that gives you all oxygen. Have we charged you for that? We have kept (laughs) that jungle alive. We haven't cut it down. We haven't fucking destroyed it like you colonizers have. Uh, And (laughs) and we haven't charged you for the air. Uh, And it was a fuck. It's fucking great. It's it's great. That's amazing. Yeah, it's just fucking. And he's not he's not wrong. He's not fucking Although, wrong. No, I think the ocean actually produces more oxygen it does. for the planet. But but he also breaks yeah. down the CO two and like he, he gets in like he's not no dummy. True. This guy. So yeah, yeah. Uh, he he breaks. Well, the down, ocean like, also takes most ocean, of the CO two yeah. out. But anyway, the ocean's pretty damn important. Yeah, and and you we know got to stop you know overfishing it. You know, it's also at the bottom of the ocean that has got nothing to do with anything. Is uh, is giant uh, me- frozen methane that mm. slowly seeps up. That if any of it, if any of it gets flash melted for some reason, we're fucked. So giant uh giant swaths of frozen methane down there. Uh I want more cereal for five dollars. Ben gets very salty when stupid questions are asked. YouTube <laughs> will not notify me when you go live. So I hardly get to catch live. them. Oh, when he goes live. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. It's f- I, whenever I s- I don't get notified either, but when I see him live, I, I like to tune in because it's it's very entertaining. He's very funny. Uh, he is. Yeah, he, yeah. He's based as shit. If you yeah. follow him on Twitter. Uh, oh yeah, I I, I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, when when he called Melanie Mack a national treasure. Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord J she for ten dollars. Our brains run on electricity. If you notice mass behavioral changes happening in concert with celestial magnetic events, you don't need to know about electricity to put two and two together. Exactly. And we've talked right. about it before. Full moon. Great example. You've so, talked about you know X-ray girl. You've I, seen it in hospitals. You've uh-huh. seen the change. Think about it. I've seen the change in prisons. Uh, yeah, it's it's nuts. You didn't think about it. Uh, well, to, I didn't. Th- I, well, what I meant to say was I I didn't think to talk to him about that. Like, l- like lunar uh, lunatics, you know? Yeah. Like the magnetic changes in people's energies when it's a full moon out, you know. So the so. sun has to affect that too. Absolutely, oh, I'm sure it does. Hundred yep. percent. Uh, McCock has gifted ten neurotic live memberships for fifty. <laughs> Thanks, McCock. <laughs> <laughs> like me a thumbnail. Oh my god. 
I I am wow. currently yeah. rewatching. Wow. Uh, I'm thinking of Hawk, not Macaque. I'm currently rewatching Cobra Kai. That's what we're doing for. Ah, oh, nice. So fucking cool. good. It's ridiculous and great. Yeah, the first like, season is really good. Dude, the I I like it. I like the fact that uh, <laughs> um he runs into like the two uh the two people from Karate Kid three in japan yeah. on a business trip <laughs> randomly <laughs> yeah it's so fucking funny dude is that two words i can't remember but um it's uh the second one i believe second second one where he goes to japan okay uh church jack z for 9.99 i live and work in ennis texas word is to expect 80 to 100 000 people to descend on our fine town for the eclipse <laughs> you all act right you hear uh and stay off my lawn yeah Mom. good well, going, it's going, on, on, going on someone else's lawn in Texas doesn't sound uh, like a smart idea. I wouldn't idea. do that. No. I would <laughs> no. not fucking do yeah. that. Mm, the um, no. the area it, that uh, people are going to go to in Ontario, uh, they put a state of emergency for that day. Wow. Because <laughs> they're afraid of how many people are going to go. Well, it's fair. going. It's like if I stayed home, I'd see it perfectly. It's going right over San Antonio. So. I'll be in but the I'm sky. But I'm not staying home. Yeah, I'll be on the road. Uh, Thomas M. is a traveler. Uh, says, uh-oh, guys, the Bible, Joel 2.31, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon will turn to blood before coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes, the red moon. I've seen a red moon yeah. before because smog in Southern California. Well, the moon, he, he actually talked about that in and fires. one of his videos. It actually will bake as well. So it will turn red when he said oh. the, the sun will turn red. But uh, we didn't talk about the moon also will turn red because the moon has no atmosphere. Atmosphere. It's, yeah, it, it's going to get it gets freaking hit. And that's what Fried. when I asked him about the, the moon, we talked about the glass beads and the, 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 the glass that can't happen from an asteroid hit. It is from the sun baking it. So it happened. They they found evidence of it happening before. So that's what I asked him about the the astronauts. Anyway, Jerome Gazinski for five dollars says, "Will the tidal forces from the eclipse have an effect on the Numadric Fault Complex?" He said, "Yes, and it will liquefy pretty much the entire area." Yeah. Uh, and lick that's from liquefaction. That's from there'll be so many earthquakes and then water will get into the mix. That's what was uh, remember in the eighties earthquake um down by when where was the liquefaction it was down by the harbor like near pier 39 uh because um a lot of san francisco especially like sunset is just landfill it's just dredged bay that they made more land and it's just fucking sand uh so yeah during an earthquake it's not good to be on sand yeah that's i i often something i thought about all the time living in san francisco it's like damn I am between two pretty big bodies of water, like right between them. Yeah, uh, I would not point. want to be here <laughs> during oh. like some cataclysm. This is like the worst fucking place to be. Uh, yeah. Uh, euthanasia, and, and it's spelled like youth in Asia, has gifted 50 Neurotic oh. Live memberships for $250. Yeah. 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 What? 50? That's huge. Yeah. Dang. Damn. Not the new travelers. New travelers. Sorry, that gets the hype music. That's <laughs> can't, you can't tell it. that I was dancing over here. You are. I believe it. I believe it. Uh single cell organism 13 for five dollars. Just send a super sticker. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Matthew Hammond for $4.99. What's up, brother? How do we perceive technology so that we do not go back to the dark ages if we if that were to happen? How do we? Oh, how do we re-perceive technology? Preser preserve, yeah. preserve technology. Preserve. Oh, preserve. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I you spelled it right. I'm just retarded. Um, how it's, do we preserve? You can't. There will no, be no. It, power. it is. There, there are certain places supposedly that there. Do you do? You, have you seen Book of Eli? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Actually, so that very okay. the very end. Real quick story. I saw it before anybody, because. Cool. Uh, Gary Witta, who's a fucking woke TDS retard. Uh, I knew him at the time, <laughs> and uh, he wrote the movie. So oh, okay. I went and saw so, a, a preview screening of it back in the day. 
I love that. I movie, like the movie. It's such a yeah, good great, movie. great yeah. movie. Yeah, Denzel Washington this is a good. One. Um, but Very at the end of the movie, also. also true. Very true. Uh, two goats in one movie. It's yep. I can't go wrong. Uh, so at the end of the movie, he makes it to this place. Well, it's a boat, but in I think reality, it's the ark is actually these underground storage facilities that they're building that have like one of every seed or probably like packs of every seeds that's ever been produced and you know they're probably storing every different type of information that they can in this event like so it'll be preserving technology okay so we'll preserve technology in a very small sense like an arc sense yeah like but they can't reproduce everything but factories are going to be gone you know like it's not like they're going to be able to make lines new gone, uh right? like yeah super computers right they're not going to be able to make new shit they can't make no. new stuff because like all the factories are going to be wiped out and stuff I think, so i i think kind of like 50 50 to 100, 50 to 100 years whoever's left from whatever plague okay for one there will be cannibalism there will be uh just deaths of starvation there will be disease but after you survive all that 50 to 100 years we could probably be back to the 1800s you know maybe. yeah yeah. Early 1800s. Early 1800s. Maybe. I wouldn't say so age. difficult. I'd say like there'd be people around who could probably do some metallurgy stuff. So. Yeah. If they plan it well enough, we shouldn't have to, well, I say struggle, but to at least get food. Yeah. And clean water. If they can preserve water. the knowledge, so like books or in some way, of how they did things, not necessarily that they can just build computers again, but the knowledge that it takes to build a computer, they could preserve that. I don't know how they do that though. Like right. time capsule into the under but the it will be a lawless place. There will be for some long guns time. left. Yeah. There'll be yeah, it'll just be uh, like uh it will not be safe to travel between towns. You'll have to be in some basically a cult religious community <laughs> that's got a <laughs> wall around it. I mean it's it's gonna yeah it ain't gonna yeah. be fun and even if you're out in the middle of fucking nowhere living on your own prepping anybody gets near your property you're just gonna have to shoot them yeah you can't you're trust just, them you're, you're not gonna be able to trust anybody nope it's like zombies without there's the zombies. uh in the expanse um something bad happens and they're de basically dealing with it, the aftermath on on earth and uh it's it's i think it does a pretty good job of uh what what season is that uh it was it uh it's um god or why am i blanking the, on the name the of the book babylon's maybe? not babylon's ashes the one that came before babylon book five book five book five Expanded. okay yeah from the books okay book it's the best book it's i only like the saw Empire's the first two seasons, nemesis games I, nemesis I games keep watching so yeah, though they they fucked it up and they couldn't do it. The scope of it, they couldn't do. They did some some stuff of it right, but the book is excellent. I so, would love the book. I gotta get that. I there's an attack on Earth, and it's the books. aftermath on the attack on Earth, and it's uh pretty fucking good. It's pretty good. Cool. Uh, Noah Hawkins for two dollars. My arc was very real. There you go. Nice. Uh, Metastep for two dollars. I can't believe Adam is copying the Furk. He's my inspiration. Yep. Uh, Matthew Hammond for $4.99. Could the stars that fall from the sky in Revelations be satellites that fall to Earth? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, like he said, they have been they've been able to predict like how I mean, he thought he thought fucking Babylon was bad, right? Like our entire you, you thought the Roman civilization got like went sideways. Like we're going that sideways. Like it's, uh, but I still think it's fixable as long as the sun doesn't fart on us. Uh, Honky Kong for five dollars. I've seen a few models about flooding and pole shifting. Every time Central Texas seems to be all right. Anyone play Stalker? And it's 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 an acronym. Thoughts? Hail? You ever play Stalker? I mean, just in real life, I followed Mrs. Nerdrotic around quite a bit when she was young. <laughs> I hear it's a really good game, so yeah. I need to do that. Yeah, she married her stalker. You know, I just, you know, I was. You wore her down. I wore her down. <laughs> <laughs> Life is good for $5. Says, I appreciate your battle against Hollywood. Support it. But 
You and the crew delving into the supernatural is where I get my most enjoyment. Thanks. Cheers. We love it here. This this ain't going nowhere. This ain't going nowhere. I'm doing this till the day I die. It's too I much mean, fun. Bro, it's so much fun. I, so, I can't wait till we start traveling, dude. Oh, yeah. yep. Uh, Rebellion 765 for five Canadian pesos. You should watch. It's a Gundam and Nerdrotic Scout Troopers of, a, of the Empire. It's uh 43 seconds and it's pretty funny i think i've seen that i think i've seen the scout troopers of the empire but we will check it out i fucking love gundam by the way we both spend a lot of time in our office making videos that's why i connect with gundam quite a bit <laughs> uh skira tado adam and eve story oh it's it's that it's not it. the it's not the adam and eve story it's the other one Right, right, right. Matthew, you have two dollars. Uh, why do you like the FJ Cruiser? Why? It's a cool looking. Um, I don't like Jeeps because I I worked for Jeep for a while and I know how they're made and I know that Toyotas are made better. I'll give Just you that. Made AI. So I nice. bought a car That's that I knew. I I I freaking love it. I I like ugly car cars. I don't like fucking normal looking cars. I think they're the most boring fucking. I think cars are terrible now. They all look like fucking uh, pills. The same. They, they're all the yeah, same. They all look the fucking same. Yeah, they're all white, they're white and gray, gray. and lobby, yeah. and there's no fucking edges, and there's no oh, style to them. They're boring as fuck. So I like yeah. something that's unusual. That's why I bought an Element because it was the I'll, ugliest I'll fucking car I've ever seen, and that's why I'm <laughs> probably gonna get uh, the the Tesla truck. So the Cyber, the Cyber truck because it's. <laughs> Seriously, the ugliest. I saw one on the I've road the other day. It's ugly I did as, too. as sin, man. I saw one in the wild, <laughs> and I'll probably ugly. get it. Gary, <laughs> one day. <laughs> I'm hyped also, about this uh, Project Nanook. I had never heard of that before. What's Project Nanook? Uh, Doc, Dr. Dr. White, up. and yeah, he he was talking about how they were doing this this uh, like layer uh, experiment or not experiment, just excavation in the Arctic in like the 40s. And they were finding this these layer variations. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay, the that's frozen right. to temperate, or you know, to uh, like back and forth and back and forth. And like, how the hell? Like, what is the? How that's did that, we that's explain in that out of print this? book? That's like, in that's that out so of print cool. Book. The, I, 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 I almost th there's reprints. So the out of print book that he that he brings up. That's yeah, that, where, where that is from. You can get like an original print. It's like seven hundred dollars, or you wow. can get a reprint for like thirty. So I take the reprint. <laughs> I'll take the reprint. Yeah. I'll take the reprint. Although I did sure. get um, Worlds in Collision. I did get a first printing of that. Bilikovsky's nice. book. Uh, all right. We're going to wrap this up. We got a few more. Went a little you got over dinner. Today. You got dinner waiting. I got yeah, dinner macaque do. for $5. X-Ray Girl is cute and all, but I'm all about the robot man, Mark. And it's not a struggle snuggle if we both cry. <laughs> what the um. hell? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's more appropriate. That's the crying game for Mark. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my God. <laughs> I, I need that sound effect. I really do. Uh, <laughs> Rich Uncle Cheapskate on the Streamlab side for $50. Oh! So Gary, Dang. Gary, it's the apocalypse, and you have to resort to cannibalism. Who on the panel who would you would you eat first? And don't say uh, X-ray girl. Keep in mind in this scenario, you don't have soy sauce. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, if if there was no soy sauce, I mean, X-ray would be off the table anyway. <laughs> Who would I eat well, first on the panel? Oh, well, quarter Garrett's black. closer, obviously. Yeah. Quarter black because he's cl closer. What? Well, yeah. well, I mean, he's got he's got he's light gamey. and dark meat. You know, I mean, that's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> the and the bread. We have an apple to put in his mouth. God. <laughs> Got that dark meat. There's a lot of jokes there, by the way. Rich yeah, Uncle Cheapskate. Was, but I'm juicy, just going to leave thank alone. You. I'm going to yeah, leave please. it alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Teaster. And we already did the raunchiest show we've done in a long time. On FFT, so. Yeah, we, we need to let it to cool out. out. Okay. Yeah, Let's let it cool down a little bit. Uh, WG has gifted five neurotic membership, uh, memberships for $25. Okay. WG. Thanks, WG. 
I'll see you at Cosmic Summit, my friend. Cosmic Summit. Go check it out. Right, again, uh, two people we've had as guests already. Hopefully, two people will have a future guest. I definitely, I'm just going to tackle Randall. You don't think anybody. Please. Wants, right? Oh, he I'm just walks in the hallways. Him. You could totally do that. Let's get yeah. let's get Randall on the show. I would Randall love that. On the show. Uh, Juan yeah. Cass, but uh, Luke's going to be there and Ben from Uncharted X. We love those guys. Uh, my anxiety has gone up. Magnetic reasons, perhaps, maybe, or maybe just this show, Juan Castle. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know it's, why. I... It's frightening. This show, I mean, that subject, it's actually kind of scary. But it's, this is it's like wild. If, if and it's gloom. Oh, true, it's totally scary. And this is the shit yeah. I listen to every night when I go to bed. <laughs> I'm like, Papa just... how, how's the world going to burn tonight? Mm, Yay. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I am going over it. What's the book I'm going over now, which is actually pretty good. Let me recommend it real quick. It is The Ancient Giants Who Ruled America. It's on Audible by Richard J. Dewhurst. Hmm. It's uh, it's all information. So if you are just, I mean, for one, it'll put you to sleep like fucking that because the reader is like very somber. But it is just information chronicling mounds and it's not just hey you know uh we found this article no it's breaking down history and mounds and uh like mines it's it's a really good read it's a really good read if you want to get into the giants of america thing which i i fascinating subject eric k uh when shit hit Maybe barbecue in Haiti was right. Maybe, maybe he was. If you're a YouTuber, by the way, don't go out, don't go down there to fucking interview him. He yeah, that would be dumb. That's so ridiculous that that is a thing. <sighs> oh, idiot. anyway, six hundred thousand dollar like ransom. I mean, oh. fucking dumbass. Crypto Kev, what's up, man? For ten dollars, few made it. See our boy uh, Luke throwing shade at Billy Carson on Twitter this week. Hail chat. Yeah, I did. I Billy appreciate- Carson's out there the people in my circle that don't give a shit and I've got a lot of them and they're all awesome. I respect the hell out of that energy. I don't give a shit. I'm going to give you my opinion. It's like, yes, it's okay to debate these things. And and that's all Luke did was just debate him. That's fine. Uh, Billy Carson. Um, it's been around a while. It's been around a while. Uh, he, he's like David Wilcock. He gets a little, no, a lot further out there than I would, but it's okay to talk about. But I think some of the shit he brings up is crazy. The one thing Luke got him on was the the Maya and not the Mayans. So that's the first thing he nailed him on in the video, because Billy Carson called called them the Mayans. He's all no, it's the Maya. <laughs> Uncommon <laughs> soul for ninety nine cents. <laughs> Super sticker uh thank you for the super sticker uh paul uh arius for 20 dollars says gary the cyber truck is in black looks sick also saw a black lord cyber truck oh fucking lord online too uh love my kia ev6 there you go there you go i love my car my 2016 fj cruiser with 150,000 miles uh and i'm never getting rid of it for one they're collectible cars. Like people like them a lot. It's like the element. Those are kind of collectible cars too. My element's fucking ancient. Got that in 2003. And it has, it's on its second engine, second transmission, and it's got a quarter of a million miles on it. Wow. Yeah. I don't, we don't get rid of cars. It's a weird thing. It's the same with me. They have to pretty much die. Yeah. Yeah. They got to crap out on you. But even if they, well, maybe because I worked in the auto industry, I'm like, you know, you can get a, a, a new engine at a junkyard for like six hundred dollars it's like a thousand bucks to put it in that's so much cheaper than a new car (laughs) that's so much fucking cheaper than a new car Mm -hmm. um youth in asia for ten dollars make the uh theocratic monarchies great again 2070 (laughs) they will be uh if that actually happens they will be there'll be a new religion some old religions some might make a comeback you never know macaque for two (laughs) dollars it says you you like ugly cars, and I like the AMC Gremlin. Yes. Yes. Eric K for $2. Garrett is well marbled with fat YGB. <laughs> wow. What the hell? Yeah. Last wow, one of the I'm night. I'm well taken care of. Last one of the night. Crypto Kev. 
uh, has gifted five Nerdrotic Live memberships for $25. Thank you very much. We're going to get out of here. I was going to show you um, something weird on Google Earth, but we got to get out of here. Remind me next time. Sure. All right. Well, there, there's like a, a weird shaped water. People are saying it's a portal, but it looks like a, there's a boat in the middle of the desert and some water hole in the middle what? of the fuck in Death Valley. I can find it really quick. You guys say goodbye. Uh, okay. Uh, Bye. And, and well, I'll find it. no. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, all right. So I got I got my show tomorrow, base staff Monday. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I got uh, I'm gonna do a gender reveal, even though <gasps> that seems to piss off everyone. I was like, should I do it to piss off the libs on on Twitter, right? And everyone was like, gender isn't blah 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 blah. And I'm like, wow, it's pissing off the conservative side too. <laughs> this is this is wonderful. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. I, I do know. it. Yeah, if it pisses uh, off I, both. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Go yeah ahead. So okay. I'm gonna do that. And do so I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm excited because that's pretty much the only thing that I care about in life right now. It's like everything oh, is, is is resolving around my my little uh, my little future child. Uh, I'm very should. excited about. So we, we, I was at my in-laws all weekend, and they have kept absolutely everything from when my wife and her brother were kids. So we just we came back with just like toys and like all the like a bunch of the stuff that she had when she was a kid, and it's like it's a treasure trove of stuff. So it, it's pretty. I, I'm pretty excited about it. So yeah, yeah. And, Get a daddy. Uh, so Get just daddy. looking forward to that. So come check it out. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, uh, I'm going to uh, go back to sleep. That's what I got mm. going on. Yeah. Um, well, I hope you feel better before sleep. tomorrow. Hopefully, yeah. I, I slept for like 24 hours straight yesterday. Damn. Yeah. I mean, I, was like, I got up like an hour or so in between. Ate something You'll went be back on to the sleep. soon then. Oh, I shit. Think. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, um, that's the cue. Oh, no. That's your cue. That's, that's, oh, it, that means it's bedtime. It's, that means it's 3 a.m. <laughs> oh, go. gosh. Poor Bye. Thing. Um... <laughs> I have tomorrow uh Doctor Who. We're doing a review of Blink and Utopia. I'm excited for that. A lot of people have been saying Blink is like one of the best episodes. It, it is. It's Fantastic. PM Eastern on my channel. Uh G Garrett, what are you doing? Uh just He's trying not to, He's sleeping. Sleeping. not to be dead. Okay. So real quick, we're gonna <laughs> zoom on. You see this? This is Death Valley. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. We're going, in, we're going in. 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 What the fuck? What what a weird shape, too. Oh, there's just a boat. Yeah. What the fuck? And then if what you go up, that? there's another one right there. What the hell? Like, Wait, it's inverted. Yeah. It's the same thing. What the fuck is it? Now it's probably some military whatever. And there's tanks around here too. I can't find them now, but there's Wait, like what? There's fucking tanks like all over the place. <laughs> There's like abandoned the tanks. Like you yeah. need to go tank, find like this the... in the desert. I there's a see this. there's a video on Twitter that is uh, there. Is that one? Nope, that's not one. That I got. I have to look for the tanks, but they found tanks like scattered all over the place around here. Wow. Over there. Uh, no, not over there. But yeah, there's a boat. Fucking what the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, so strange. And there's rando tanks like scattered. I don't know if you can see my. So it's like all around this area right here. There's like tanks, like abandoned fucking tanks. And look at That's like weird. Oh, here middle. I found an article oh, showing the pictures of them. So it's probably just some fucking water hole that they used that the Navy used or something like that. Or because the, there's lots of Navy. Like, uh, I think that's more accurate. I don't testing. think it's anything. Do you want me to show you crazy. the tanks? Yeah. This Real is quick. just a picture of it, but um, yeah, they are the tanks. There's fucking tanks laying out. Uh, it's probably like there. artillery testing or something like that. You know, Don't you want to go yeah, out there and start targets. one? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it more probably like testing like what, uh, like oh. how far through water can we shoot this this tank probably. shell? Or, probably. You know? Target practice. Next time we do a show, <laughs> we are that very close sense. to to Long Valley, and we'll break down Long Valley super volcano and like how that could fuck some shit up. Uh, share share the show. Let's get yes. us to 100k. Let's uh, do it. 
There's a couple more soups if you want to read those. Read them. You read uh, them. Simon Ho for two Canadians says, getting triggered by all this micro nova aggression. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Matthew but it... Hammond <laughs> for $2. Did you consider buying a Pontiac Aztec? No, no. But I, I love that they, they in a Top Gear. I love Pontiacs. In Top Gear, they do race one. In a, in the Scotland special, they find the first, worst American cars to to do a little race, and the that's Aztec funny. is fucking hideous. It, yeah, Love that's it. too hideous. It really me. is. It's really bad. No, no the right. FJs are fucking cool. Don't don't be disappointed. You know, it's funny. The one I ordered it real quick. quick it's okay. Quick. It's called okay. um. It's not three well, I forgot hours what the, late. Yeah. Three hours late. I'm trying to think of the. It's called Cavalry Blue. Right, that's the color. When I ordered it, I called them all. Yeah, get me the one in Confederate blue. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The guy's all, you mean cavalry? I'm all, yeah, same thing. Oh, that's what I meant. Uh, <clears throat> no Freudian slip. <laughs> give me the South uh, will rise again red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my all God. All right. We'll see you in a couple weeks, folks. Uh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye. Happy Bye. Easter. .com. Welcome, travelers, to the fringes of reality, where the strange and mysterious meet, and the thin veil between fact and fiction is torn. <laughs> Welcome to the Forbidden Frontier.